What's up, everybody? Welcome to We Have Cool Friends, the show where we interview our cool friends about the cool things they're doing. I'm Greg, that's Nick, and that is our cool friend, Josh McCuga. Guys, uh, hey. What's what? Yeah, no, no, no. the best. Oh, no. Now, here, Josh, I want you to know, you're, you're here on the big one, episode four. <laughs> yeah. All right? This is the one where we have to have our Make shit together. Yes. Make or break. And the episode. thing I've seen on the two uh, We Have Cool Friends that I hosted <laughs> was that, hey, Greg, you should probably introduce your cool friends better than you do. Because it was Devin Sawa, Anthony Rapp. Let's talk about something weird and random and not talk in the top about your career. Okay. This actually plays in because one of the big questions I had for you, and first off, uh, cheers, of course. Cheers. cheers everyone. Always having Thank a cocktail. Yes. Cannonball. Yeah, I, cannonball. I mean, cannonball. the first time cannonball. I came on uh, the Game Over Greggy show was... I was like, oh, you guys drink during this? And they're like, well, we can. And then we chug like a kick. Yeah. That's awesome. what we do. That's what I was we do. arguably <laughs> the most drunk I've ever seen anyone in this office. Yeah. We've had some drunk. <laughs> we've had 24 hour streams. First off, and that's more drunk than I people. was going to say, I don't know if that's true. Because, yeah, when Josh did the newlywed game oh. during Extra Life, and couldn't, <laughs> and no matter how many times we explained how the newlywed game is supposed to work, there'd be this. I looked over at Josh. Look for Josh. I looked over at Josh at one point when I, had, I, t- I, t- I was like, Josh, Josh, would you like me to take over? And he went, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and then I said, Josh, do you want to sit on this nice bean bag? And he was like, Yeah, yeah, let me sit on the bean bag. You just kept yelling at me. That's not how it works. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, it's because we'd be so very funny. clear. Like, don't ask the question that way. Like, got it. Won't do it again. It. Immediately, next question. Hey, I'm <laughs> spoiling the answer. I thought, <laughs> no. I thought you and John Drake were in a fight, and uh, you were gonna pummel him. Yeah, I would I never yeah, pummel the Drake. You oh, can. God, yeah. It was great. It was yeah. So the question I actually had before Good. when we when we were setting this up, when we were thinking about bringing you on as a we have a cool friend. Okay. Is actually plays into this exact thing. Okay. How do you describe yourself when somebody asks what you do? I think it's easy mm-hmm. for me and for Nick, right? We're internet personalities. Um, okay. I, yeah, I used to be a critic. I used to all this different stuff, right. right? Like, you are in so many different places where you're yeah. on Collider. You're mm-hmm. you're hosting shows over there. Mm-hmm. You have the you have the Josh McCuga show. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you're on WGN, which mm-hmm. as a Chicago born and bred kid is like the biggest deal you could ever have. I will say I, they gave me a WGN. Uh, like North Face jacket, oh, yeah. and I wore it to Chicago. And somebody's like, "Hey, where'd you get that WGN jacket?" I was like, "I actually host the show." And they're like, "You do what?" Yeah. And they're like, "Gina, come over <laughs> here. <laughs> do you know Sven <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, that's kind of a hard question. I always say I, I work in entertainment, which is so lame. But like, I'm an entertainer. Yeah. Uh, I used to say I'm I'm a comedian because I was I was pretty much just a stand up for like a solid three years. It like toured around, did a ton of stand up gigs. And was kind of saying to myself, like, I'm a comedian, but I thought that, like, like kind of sold myself short. Sure. Um, of, like, your full range of ability. Totally, yeah. right? Because you guys know, and we've said it on, on this channel a bunch of times before, is, you know, I want to be the next host of Jeopardy, right? right? So that's always kind of been my goal. So if I was to say anything, I would just say, and what I file on my IRS tax form is I'm an entertainer. Okay. So, oh, I thought you were going to say you file with the IRS, future yeah. host of Jeopardy. Future host. That would yeah, be baller. Yeah. The future Alex. Hey, just now. push it, you know yeah. what I mean? Really get it going. Because when I first when I first got in entertainment, because I, I mean, I went to college and got a degree kind of just like all, of, all like we all did and uh, and not in entertainment. And I moved What's to New your York. Degree in? Uh, business logistics and international sure. business. I could see you. Man, I could see you. I see you doing that. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine how much fun Josh McCougar would be? Oh, you're you're in an Ohio <laughs> hotel bar. You have, you're like, <laughs> yes. all right, well, let's talk about this. All right, we'll get to the policy. <laughs> Give me another round of it. <laughs> Around. I like, think I, I, would, bought, I bought insurance and a lawnmower. And I'm like, I have no idea how he how sold me both those that? things. He my, sold me a pen also. <laughs> it was my pen. My dad was, a, uh, uh, he worked in cars forever. So he was like a traveling salesman for a long time. Like he yeah. would go from dealership to dealership. He was working as like a corporate rep. And I think I got that like salesmanship vibe from him because entertainment is selling yourself. 100%. I mean, you're, you're 100% selling yourself. So when I first got out of college and I told myself when my parents, when I was 12, what I was going to do. And they were just like, all right, Jeff, what, all right. Jeopardy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was either that or be a regular to bar. I already accomplished the regular. Regular bar. You come you come at 15. Yeah. Not yeah. just regular to bar. You are regular at some of the most historic bars in LA. <laughs> I mean, I've done well for myself yeah. as far as picking out where to drink in LA. Oh my god! Uh, th- my buddy came from uh, from in Pittsburgh like three weeks ago, and we walk into a hotel like my bar in my neighborhood, and we walk in, and the one girl behind the bar is like, "Josh, we haven't seen you in like a week." And my my buddy was like. A week? A week? <laughs> you live in LA. Yeah. <laughs> I fly so, back here once in a while. They yeah. make great Manhattans. But uh, so I, when I first graduated, I moved to New York and I was just going to act. I was going to be sure. an actor. That's what I was going to do. And then I have the headshot. Yeah, you yeah. do have the original. And what was the trajectory there? You went there. So you you get the business degree and you're like, no, it's time to go act. And you just yeah. go to New York, sight unseen. You're trying to do theater. You're trying to do musical. I was just trying to do what I was originally going to move to LA at 22. And my parents sure. were really skeptical of 
th- doing what I was doing, right? And they were, cause I had no theatrical training. Sure. I yeah, had that's a, that's nothing, terrible. you know, uh, there was a lot of, there was a Penn state had a conservatory where I went and a lot of people, you know, majored in theater and all that kind of stuff. I did none of that. I just went to frat parties like and entertained people. Well, but was that, do you, do you feel like you, you didn't choose a major because you weren't quite sure what you wanted to do or it was because your parents were like, Hey, do business. And you're like, I'm gonna do business. Fall back on. Yeah. So, you know, in college, everybody was going and getting co- like co-ops or internships in the summertime. I was going to the beach and bartending at shore bars and sure. just having a blast and living at beach houses with my buddies and, you know, enjoying myself. And uh, I, but again, I told my parents I was going to do this. Like there was, there, there was no other trajectory. This is what I was going to do. And I think they were, I was one of those kids that once I put my mind to something, even if it was a weird thing, like I'm going to jump off that 60 foot dam in Oregon, no matter what you guys tell me, I'm going to do it. Or like, I'm going to be a snowboarder. That's what I'm going to do. So I went to New York and just kind of, Picked up a backstage magazine, got into acting class and just started getting auditions. Wow. Okay. And then did, you know, when I was, I was in New York about two years, did like 20 or 30 student short films to build a reel. I did this independent horror film called Plasterhead, which you can pick up anywhere. I think it streams on a Netflix, perhaps. Or Amazon. You can look up Plasterhead. Yeah. I'm the star of the movie. I'm like the, the main male God, lead. I play a guy see, named Steve. You know, I usually, right I, we keep the audience questions till the end of the friend zone. <laughs> yes. But I'm going to let, I'm going to let uh, Drew Canada, AKA DH Canada out of the friend zone for this okay. one time to yeah. ask, are you surprised Plasterhead never got a sequel? Because he wrote in to patreon.com slash kind of yes. funny with that question. Yeah, oh, yeah, because it ended open ended. It 100% <laughs> We're did. making the Plasterhead <laughs> universe. <laughs> universe. We, it, it was really, really cool, though, because it was th- these two young kids. They were fresh out of film school and they were like, they had some money and they were like, we're making this independent horror film. We went out to this shack in the middle of the Catskills and shot for a week straight. And it was freezing cold. And we had indoors and outdoors. I got hit by a car at one point. And, like, not for real, like in the movie. Oh, okay, thank so you. We had to, like, That's helpful. I'm not a stunt person. They're like, hey, they're like just start yourself in the hood i was like it's moving pretty <laughs> fast like i don't know like now nah, we'll fix it in post nothing big so uh, we i shot this independent horror film i did a couple stage plays i actually got cast in like an off off broadway play which at that point was kind of like equity i was actually making money as an actor sure, i think that's sure. when my parents finally saw holy shit our son is actually you know it might not have been a lot of money but it was at least a paycheck and then i met with uh, an agent from in la and he's like listen if you do what you want to do and it's clear I can see what you want to do. You can't be in New York. You have to get to LA uh, because there's just not enough TV production. There's not enough co- hosting gigs. There's not enough entertainment action in New York. Now you could probably do it because there's probably a decent amount of production, but still LA is entertainment Mecca. So you yeah, kind of sure. have to get there. And so I moved out uh, 2008 I was living on a, bu- a friend's couch. She is now an executive producer at Dr. Phil, which is kind of oh, nice. like crazy. And she actually got me a pilot with Dr. Phil, like my second year out here, which was cool. I was the pilot. So I was the I was the color man for the real life Olivia Pope, you know, the the woman from Scandal that's like the oh, DC yeah, okay. fixer. So yeah, this yeah, woman yeah. was oh. a DC fixer. Interesting. And she was supposed to, you know, she was she was giving advice to people on how to fix, but she was kind Nick of Nick Scarpino's running a struggling YouTube company. <laughs> He's here asking for a fifty thousand dollar investment. <laughs> it was reverse Shark Tank. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> so I was Just like charity. I was working the crowd and working this like monitor of people calling in for questions and stuff. And it was shot on Dr. Phil's stage. Like, it was really cool. They had a full studio audience. That's cool. We shot four episodes of this show. I was and like, you're like, I've made it. I did it. Yeah. yeah. Like Dr. Phil came up to me afterwards. Like it's really nice meeting you. And I was like, thanks Phil. This is great. <laughs> he's like, he's, he's like, definitely going to remember my name. Yeah, totally. And then nothing ever happened with that show, obviously, but that was like a cool thing to have on the reel. And then, you know, like slowly but surely got in with schmoes. And, and then I found, you know, myself doing a lot of stand up comedy. And then I, when I was doing a lot of the road stuff, I found myself being very alone and I don't do yeah. well alone. Mm. You know, I, I do String well. Drink too much or what? I mean, a little bit of that. But I, mean, I, just, I mean, that is a, sorry, I, that it came off silly, but that's my question. Totally. Like, do you, is it self-destructive? Totally. I think I, I, I don't think I was drinking too much. I just think I was drinking all the time. Mm. Not, do you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Pretty much every night. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because that's I'm, what you do. I'm on the road. You d- have a couple drinks before you go on stage. You have a drink on stage. You talk for 45 minutes, 50 minutes, whatever. You come off stage and then you're like, and then a student invites you out or like the, the road manager invites you out. Yeah, they do. You know what I mean? I'm, I was co-ed. 26, 27. I still look 22. Yeah, right? I still do. Yeah, thanks, man. And, uh, and then I found myself like very alone. You know what I mean? And I didn't like it enough that being alone was worth it. 
So sure. I went back to LA sure. and I was just doing stand up gigs in LA. And if like me and Ellis wanted to go, go do a show out of town, great. Or if we wanted to do something in the greater Los Angeles area, great. But then once the podcast and the YouTube stuff kind of started, this is all collider stuff. This is no, down. Sh- well, this was Schmo's No when okay. Schmo's No first started. This was Between the Sheets when Between the Sheets first started. I had this uh, sketch group called The Casual Mafia and we, we, released a bunch of YouTube sketches when like the YouTube music video and the sketch thing was like a big deal. Yeah. And when YouTube People first super launched famous on that. Yeah. And like our, the one song I wrote called the douchebag anthem has like 700,000 hits. So it did okay for, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? It didn't go viral, but all of that was kind of like, you know, just dipping my hands and stuff that I knew that I was, I would have fun doing. Sure. Right. And then we sold the show to MTV that would, that never went anywhere. Like we, it went all the way almost to pilot. Yeah. The executives approved it. And then they switched all their executives out. It was like when MTV went from music to reality, reality TV television. and we lost like this awesome scripted deal on a show and then me and a buddy sold another pilot and then I sold a feature film with another buddy so I was like getting like I, I was talking to this dude uh, he was a teacher at Penn State and I threw like the Penn State Alumni Association he came out to LA and he looked me up and he was like let's go get a drink he's like 65 years old and he said listen in your career if you don't book something or move forward every year of your career you're not doing it you're like that's not a career and each year i would have like one major milestone at least that's how yeah. i looked at it like sure, i was sure. booking something and so you know then i got so then schmoes no kind of took off and i was with those dudes and then you know uh the casual mafia was doing really well and then i launched between the sheets and then the between the sheets youtube channel kind of took off and then the josh mccuga show and then i got the travel channel show uh you know and that was like my first hosting gig on tv which was like you know, one of those chills moments where what was that show? It was called Epic Happy Hours. Uh, the, the idea you just can't get away from the drinking <laughs> no, and traveling. Exactly. Hey man, right uh, what you know. That's what that was. Yeah. Uh, and the show I think would have been amazing. I, I don't. There, I don't think there's any real one person to blame. It just didn't get the ratings. And I think Travel Channel was in the midst of changing up how they wanted their programming to look. Like sure. it was man versus food. Now they do a lot of the. Um, what's it called? Like the paranormal stuff. They do sure, a lot yeah, of like ghost, ghost hunters, hunters, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But our show was called Epic Happy Hours, and it was awesome. Like, it was great. But, you know, the beginning of the show was like, it starts out, I'm Josh McCuga. So, like, that's the first line of the show. It was, it was, I mean, it was epic, to say the least. And then a week later, I got married. So, within, like, a two-week span, I had my own show on TV. I got married. I come back from my honeymoon. I get a call from Travel Channel. We're not going forward with the show. So, from, like, the highest of highs, it was one episode. Oh, my God. I thought it was one. They just launched one. Oh, wow. Which is so weird. Like, had they, because what Travel Channel was doing at the time is they were, they were shooting, like, 15 pilots airing maybe five or six of them and seeing if they got any kind of traction yeah. they didn't they were gone if they did they went none of them got any traction because you can't do that with the show you can't just air one show yeah you gotta build i hope audience. you enjoyed it see you in seven months S- see you later yeah yeah you know maybe we'll have something for you in seven I mean, months. at least on amazon you could vote yeah right? like yeah. i could have social media it and voted sure. right regardless that production company that i did that show with i've stayed in close contact and we're working on a couple different ideas but then it came became like then it then i got into collider right and then collider How'd you hook up with them? Collider basically kind of oh, bought Schmoes No. Okay. So Schmoes right, No right. and Collider kind of merged at one point. I was working on this show at first called Film HQ, which was part of the Comic-Con HQ network, which yeah. was at SVOD that only lasted about a year. And that was year. another one. Com- like the Comic-Con network we all knew was going to be around for a decade. A decade. Like, <laughs> what shows is are on it? Yeah, I don't know. Steve knew. had one. Trish had one. Yeah. I remember all that. I remember our well, friends had shows, and I remember going to Comic-Con <laughs> and seeing not billboards, but... Big standy things Dude. out by the train tracks. I'm like, fuck, this is a real thing. Maybe I was wrong. And then, like, two weeks later, I was like, Dum. yeah, I w- had a big standy thing yeah. at, on the thing. I we you were just a generic white guy then. Yeah, I didn't know who you were, though. You know yeah, t- totally. I mean, I remember being at the launch party. It was me, Trisha Hirschberger, and she's like, can you believe this? Steve there goes, is like, we got shows. I'm like, this is going to be amazing. And then gone. <laughs> like, <laughs> then we literally uh-huh. gone in a day. Like, they were, they just ripped the rug right out from under us. But then Collider kind of took off, and then Schmodown was doing really well. And, you know, in the, in that meantime, I have, have like sold a couple different shows and like have different shows in, in pitches around. But yeah. for the most part, it's that Hollywood hustle, man. Just so that's doing my, everything. That's my question. I think on the, on the heels of all this, does being an entertainer, as you describe yourself, suck? I feel like you have a lot of these babies getting killed in cribs, right? Yeah. Where you're, you're, you did this it's thing, we almost got there, yeah. and it went down. Yeah. That's just how I think. Do you look oh, at yeah. baby? You know I mean? He's so cute. Yeah, Purple it's in adorable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, to, to paint that in a different light, because we're obviously on a different aspect of entertainment, yeah. right? Like, yeah. I've never been on an audition for something. You haven't? No. I've, oh. never, I've never gone to a cattle call audition. I've never tried to put myself out there okay. that way. Yeah. Um, I can sympathize with you when it comes to like going to places to do comedy mm-hmm. on, on a very low level mm-hmm. um, as far as what I've done so far. But, yeah. but like to us, it's, and I don't know if Greg can talk to this, it's so wild, the idea of 
of trying to book a television show for people that don't know who we are, that aren't our friends, that are like, yeah, come on, do this stupid little thing that we get to do, right? Mm -hmm. Like the idea of developing pitches and trying to go out there and sell something from scratch yeah. is is wild to me. And it sounds like so much energy. It's a lot of energy, it is. I, I wouldn't exactly say it sucks. Um, at points, it is, it's hard on the heart. Sure. You know what I mean? Because you believe in something so much and then you see Aisha Curry put it on ABC and you're like, well, if I had just had Aisha Curry's ear, I could have gotten that show. Sure. Um, and there are, there were times there's no part of me that has ever thought about quitting because I have a lot of friends that I started in entertainment with that quit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There was me and a buddy show sold a show that, that travel channel bought in the room. This was like my first year in Los Angeles. They bought it in the room. You're like, this like, is so easy. We are going to series. Like this is one of the coolest ideas ever. And then we didn't hear from them again. Jeez. Like, but that has not work. They just literally go, we love it. We and love then you it. get a check. No, they were like, we love this. We, I mean, this is one of the best pitches we've ever had. This is our series. We are so excited about this. Let's just let, let you know, give us a one sheet. Let's do this and do that. And we never heard from them again. Oh, wow. Okay. Like it, it happens like that. It that's, really, really that's does. My, that's, that's maddening to me. But, but and, and that's, that's the thing. Like we're, we're at a much different time. Like I taught when I went through college, obviously, yeah. like I graduated in 2002. So like the idea of any of this happening was just, I, I couldn't even fathomed yeah. owning my own company because we have our own distribution outlet and our own subscription platform and all these things. And it just seems to me like like it's it's w w the, the path has diverged, yeah. you know, and because and, we talk about we, we kid around about moving to L.A. every once in a while. We, we, we talked about it a little seriously back a couple of years ago. And now we're like, we don't know. But that lifestyle is so different than what we're doing. It's, um, you know. I think the, the most difficult part about it is that you don't, sometimes you don't know where money's coming from a lot of times, mm -hmm. which, you know, I mean, listen, my first six years in Los Angeles, my, my two years in New York and all through college, I bartended. I was legitimately, that was my main source of income was bartending. And I have some ridiculous stories and I've written like all a, your stories are ridiculous. <laughs> The, the bartending stories, I, I've, I've written a book of memoirs of like that. I not like memoirs, but a bar stories. Right. And I think would make a fun book, but probably a better pilot. Yeah. Um, it would be like waiting on steroids. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And waiting's a great movie, yeah. but just taking waiting to an R rated level because the stuff that you saw at like a high end hotel, because I, I worked at a, at a four star hotel, five star hotel, depending uh, in Los Angeles. And our uh, bar was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> our bar was crazy. I mean, like, you know. Yeah, it was the Hotel Sofitel. Okay. Oh, yeah, Sofitel. Yeah. I asked him if he knew. Yeah, yeah of course you know. Which uh, you do you at. know? Uh, do you remember? Stories there tight. Yeah, well, the bar, a nice hotel. Yeah, the bar no longer exists there. It's changed names, but the bar the bar itself is still there. It's just changed names a couple times. Got it. And it was owned by Randy Gerber, who now is, you know, him and George Clooney started Casamigos, and now they're billionaires. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, his wife is Cindy Crawford. So the amount of the, the clientele that came through there is awesome. You got to write this book. Oh, and I wrote down like pretty much every story that I had from there that I could from memory. Uh, some of that is pretty R rated and some is very oh, funny. Go hardcore I mean, X. the quickest story that I think you please, guys will, please lay will, in, yeah. will enjoy is so the one day I, I walk in there and I'm, I'm setting up the bar and Sean Penn walks in with a buddy and he sits down at the bar and he starts smoking. And I, I was like, hey, well, it's Sean Penn. Yeah. So I go to my manager, I like turn around the corner. I don't say anything. Right. I go around the corner, I grab my manager, and I was like, hey, Sean Penn's at the bar smoking. What should I do is get him a fucking ashtray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right, done You're and like, done. It's still illegal in it's California, dead, but you know what? You're Sean but Penn. But it's, it's Sean Penn. So why not? So, but th that was that was my main source of income. But in between there, like, you know, I had some bigger bookings. Like, I, I was on a Comedy Central Thanksgiving weekend where I was the host and I was doing sketches and I was in really? I was like holy shit this is this is my big break I'm on Comedy Central I'm not even a year into stand up I booked this thing I'm hosting a thanks giveaway weekend with like PlayStation and something else I'm doing all these sketches I'm the star of this thing and then the writer strike happened and my agent dropped me because they couldn't book me on anything so and I was non-union at the point had I been union I might have been protected a little right, bit right. but a lot of those I mean you guys see what happened to Lost it it, it it uh sucked. It, it I mean it sucked during the writer strike. They lost yeah, all those yeah. episodes. A lot of a lot stuff of thing, happened. A lot of things uh, suffered. With a lot that. of things suffered. And I like I had that this was, amazing. That was, a, that was the famous uh, reason why Quan with Solos wasn't all that great. Uh, or so, so they that said. Was the reason. Or so they said. Because the they were like, oh, who can write this? Uh, yeah. who, who can legally write this? And Daniel Craig's like, I can. I got it. Oh, yeah. We'll just write it. Okay. <laughs> okay, Daniel Craig. Didn't work out that way. But like um, like you know, I've had some awesome pitches in the works of things, and I still have like a bunch of different things that are always in the works. Like if somebody asked me, do you have anything? 
Yeah, of course I've got something. And also too, like you guys said, is getting in the YouTube wagon early really helped me. Sure. Obviously, because I carved out my own little portion of the internet, at least, you know, with Collider and all these people. Well, that's, and, but, but isn't that kind of what, yeah, like this is, I hear this, I have a lot of comics that come up to me when they, once they realize that I have a semi-decent following socially, sure. uh, social media, and they always go, well, how do I get followers? Yeah. Right. And I go, well, there's no, I mean, the, the hard answer for that is you have to have been producing video on the internet for roughly 12 years. Totally. Um, and you have to have at some point uh, hitched your wagon uh, or rather grab real hard of the coattails of Greg Miller <laughs> and let him just kind of ride you to the middle area. No, that's not the I don't ride you. You ride me. Oh, I ride you. Yeah, in, yeah, that, right. in that scenario, you're riding me. I, think, I was just like, who is it? Why is he? Okay, get on my back. You know what I mean? Like that. Oh, you're carrying. Okay, I see. He's the Obi-Wan in the speeder and you're Luke Skywalker looking for and the And Kevin's yeah. our little Yoda just on our shoulders. <laughs> but but that's, that's it's. I think it's it's probably fair to say, but you have to have that X factor now to even exist as an entertainer. I think you have to, content is king. You have to just keep creating all the time. You have to be on something. You have right. to keep elevating to something. But because, I think there, there, there are people that, that I, I hear go, oh, I want, we want to get massive social media followers. Because obviously as a comedian like that is currency when it comes to totally. getting booked at things. I still stand by the fact that that doesn't mean a whole lot of dick. Because if you have a, like, I have a pretty decent following for people that want to watch videos or listen to my podcasts. Huh? But that doesn't necessarily translate to butts and seats. Yeah. Um, having said that, it's still a, a definitely a more beneficial thing than not having it. But people go, how do I get that following? How do I get that following? Yeah. Do I just tweet a lot? Do I do, am I clever? I'm like... Do you, I mean, it's the right things at the right time totally. and the right exactly. partnerships, right? But it's but it's also like, but it's consistency as well. But it's also grass is greener, right? Like, sure. I have a lot of friends that have been on the Bachelorette or the Bachelor, right? And mm -hmm. they have these huge social media followings, but they can't correlate those into numbers on like a YouTube or something sure. that they sure. want to watch. Sure. But as soon as they advertise something about the Bachelor, their numbers go through the roof. Yeah. Or if they advertise a product that like a woman may want to buy, because most of that their demographic for the Bachelor and the Bachelorette is sure. women. Yeah. Uh, and Tim and Tim and, and myself. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, and then on the flip side of things like this is such a selfish, stupid thing to say. But sometimes I tweet what I think is absolute gold and it gets like 60 likes. Then I tweet something like Jack Black was great in School of Rock and it gets 800 likes. I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah, like yeah. it's hard. I thought I crafted a pretty funny joke. The nope. only, yeah, the only thing that, I, the not. only thing I, that I've ever seen people get like in this in like the most recent years get big followings for is quote tweeting uh, the president and just yes. ripping him apart as comics. Yes, like I see comics really getting good following with that because if you have a really clever fun joke yeah. about something some some stupid politician said that can gain some traction. But yeah, it's it's hit well, or miss for the most part. I mean, what's always fascinating about Twitter game and comedians or entertainers, right? I always think of Drucker. And I remember, I remember we invited yeah. Drucker out to something on a Sunday night. And he's like, I wish I could, man. Golden Globes. This is when he lived in SF. Yeah. And I was like, you care? And he's like, oh, I don't care. It's just that I need to I be there tweeted. and I need to be making con I yeah. need to be making jokes. So that was mm -hmm. weird. And sure enough, his feet, is what, and this is Mike Drucker years and years ago, was filled with this. And it was just like, why is he spamming? And then you'd see one take off. Oh, right. yeah. And now oh, it's no. the same way where now you see, now Drucker fucking is on, yeah, he's, has he's honed on in, knows what to do. And like, he what does he do it. now? Uh, uh, he's on. He writes for Samantha, Samantha B. B. Samantha oh, B. Wow. He also wrote for okay. Adam. Ruins everything and a bunch of other shows. Well, cool, yeah, cool. the Tonight Show. Uh, <laughs> I don't really watch that anymore. Uh, well, he, that's why he's not I, there anymore. I'm, he's gone. I'm joking. <laughs> he killed it. Uh, but no, but so yeah, Mike's a perfect example. That's a great example, right? Of like, I I caught that he was doing that, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna. Um, from just a purely educational standpoint, I'm going to just try to follow him when he's like the Oscars are happening yeah. and just see how he does it. And it's very stream of consciousness, but he also, it, it also just a, a switch flipped in my brain where I was like, I'm actually just really enjoying this. Yeah. So now literally when I watch award shows, totally. I go to Mike's totally. Twitter feed but and I just I, like watch him say stupid, funny shit. That's how I got hired for the first time at Collider was my live tweeting of like the 2013 Oscars. I think sure. it was. And I was just, just having a field day, not like, in a funny way, just kind of, you know, not berating celebrities, but just like saying 100%. funny things, just stream of consciousness the whole sure, way through. Stuff, the, uh, when Twitter gets used effectively totally. for comedy, it's as if you're in the room talking to that person. Right? So it is that it's me and Nick ripping on whatever we're watching, whatever yeah, bad movie we're watching. And it's watching. such a weird energy that you can get from those things where you're like, wow. Like, like they just talk about the power of Twitter and being able to literally tap into the zeitgeist at that yeah. second of that thing. Yeah. And you feel like you're a part of it and you feel like we're all like one society of human beings. And then the next Monday, we all just go back to shit. Well, it's, it's, it, well, I mean, that's I mean, honestly, that's what the jokes are doing on that Sunday. 
someday as well. But totally. it's that funny thing of, and where there's that disconnect of with social media that you are all watching the same thing. It's a, a cultural phenomenon event. You're doing it. Yep. And it's great to make fun of a Super Bowl commercial. But when you make fun of uh, actresses, a- X's outfit, right? Or the dude, how he, f- he slipped on the red carpet, yeah. you make the joke about that. That's great. And again, as a, as a person reading it and watching you're there, it, you're like, yeah. I'm in the room with you. That's and so then good as and we've been on the other side of yeah. it, when you're the fucker who slipped on the carpet, you're like, that's Fuck. fucking a bunch of assholes. Yes. It's fine when it's in your living room at a Oscar totally. party when you see a million people doing That's it. That's why I've, I've never been the dude. Like sometimes do I do I like call out a troll or somebody like that? But at, at the end of the day, making fun of people, like if you're if you're busting my chops, I, I grew up with an older brother that beat the shit out of me. Not physically, just like mentally. And I think that's what... <laughs> I was like about to get real serious yeah, and that came up. But like, wow. but it, it, we had a great time as brothers growing up and i think that was really important in like the shaping of how i am because i think busting each other's balls i mean you guys do oh, it sure. all the time on here i love your guys dynamic on your shows and i think that's great what we do at collider too collider live has become this like this amazing thing where we just make fun of each other all the time which i love as well it should be and if somebody's going to make fun of me online go for it like i really absolutely enjoy sure. it if you're going to insult me personally and it's not really a well-crafted joke then you can probably take a walk but if you are by all means, go for it. I, I think that's that's like a healthy form of funny bullying, I guess. And, may, <laughs> and maybe that's the wrong way to say it, but... It's all mindset. That's right? what it all comes down to. Is you know, it's mindset. of and It happens here all the time where we have a code word, pickles, if yeah. it's gone too far. And then it's that thing of, I've had it where me and Nick are fucking with each other and fucking each other and it's great. And then that video goes out a week later and then somebody tweets about that and tries to get in on the joke, but I'm not in that headspace no, anymore. Right, no. I've had a really long day and I'm mad yeah. or something and at home the dishwasher's broken. And it's like, <laughs> I don't need you fucking with me right now. <laughs> Portillo, yeah. get over here! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right to the fucking ceiling. He would just yeah. t- dust. He would yeah. just turn into dust. <laughs> I think, too, is like, you were talking about auditions earlier, right? Is I mean, I don't know how many auditions I've been on. Maybe 2,000. Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, probably more. Uh, but like there's, but that, but that's the thing to me. Like people tell me that, and I and I I firmly believe that you are a very singularly unique person, and you your level of, or just a, people in general. Snowflake. I think uh, you. Thanks, I mean, you're so unique. No, no, no. I think I mean I met you, and obviously I, I we vibed because we have a lot of uh, common interests. But honestly, you're a very you're a very uh, energetic and amazing human being, and I think that you have a lot to a lot more to offer entertainment. Thanks, man. You've achieved a level of success that I most people have never will never have, I and mean, I'm sure that you have lots of friends that look at you and go, fuck, I shouldn't have quit. And you're like, well, you know, you did. But, um, wow, oh, Jesus, I totally lost my train of thought. On <laughs> this is the problem. I keep digging into the weeds. You're not even drinking. <laughs> He's not even drinking. <laughs> I try to tell people all the time, drinking makes me stronger. Yeah, it's, you know totally. what I mean? It's I'm, my I'm, superpower. I'm right there. I'm right well, there. Like, uh, like for me, wheelhouse Oh, no, that's okay, what I was going to say. So I'm, I apologize. So, uh, no. But auditioning, it just seems to me like that's something I just, I like, why do you do that to yourself? You've got... Collider, you've got all these other outlets that you can yeah. you can exercise, right? And it's the same with, like you know, there is sort of a a, a route to 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 being successful in stand up. Now that we're kind of mm-hmm. seeing, right? You know, you got to get the special on Netflix. How do you get the special on Netflix? You got like Montreal. You got places mm-hmm. you can go to to get that level of, and then but you got to also be maybe on a TV show, things like that. For for just see going out there and auditioning time and time again, I just can't. That just sounds like it would burn everyone out. Okay, so you're right. Right, because auditioning so has it? burned why out. I do it. But it listen, that's what he said earlier, right? Yeah, it's like, a sixty-five year old professor, right? Of t- like, if you're not having that one milestone, you got to keep hitting. But it's but so like, and this, so this is what I that I struggle with, right? Because obviously you have got infinite potential to do whatever you want. You've mm-hmm. got energy. You could put that toward any corner of entertainment. Sure. But you've got. It just seems to me like would like when you've got your own show, when you've got the schmoes that you can tap into. Do you ever think like, I'll take all that energy and just maybe like throw it over there and see if, if that following or that audience gets me a bigger boost to get me something else. Like Uh, I guess I'm talking more strategy than anything else. Yeah. uh, Yes and no. I think, I mean, to be honest with you, I go on a lot of auditions still because of money. I mean, you know I mean? If you get a commercial, I could, that's like a a giant bonus for the year. Right. Cause I have the cool thing about Collider is we are run by an amazing guy named Mark Fernandez and he gets entertainment. Like he gets that me coming If I'm I'm not in Collider today. That's fine. But I'm on kind of funny. I'm, I'm doing things. I'm not just like sitting around, you know, watching TV. I'm actually doing content. I'm creating content, spreading the brand, whatever the case may be. And that's not the reason I come up here, just so you guys know. I really enjoy being with you guys. Yeah, here to grease shit. the wheels. Grease the wheels. When you danced outside of the ghillie suit, three <laughs> different Collider subscribers came in at that oh, moment. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, um, but I, I think the thing about auditions, too, is now that I'm at a certain part in my life, because 
when I first got there, I didn't mind if it was a cattle call and I had to sit there for two hours. I would mm-hmm. just in case something happened. Sure. But if they're not requesting me or if like my agent isn't being like your time's at two twenty, if they give me like a two o'clock in Santa Monica, I'm not going because I know it's a cattle call. Mm-hmm. If they give me a two fifteen in Hollywood, that's an audition, right? I just know commercial wise, dramatic wise, whatever the case may be. I go on a lot more hosting auditions, which is great. Um, a lot of the hosting stuff now is meetings about shows and mm-hmm. things that they may want me for or whatever. I think once you've built up resume, the auditions don't necessarily come as often because you're actually getting meetings and pitches and things like okay. that, which is great. Uh, commercials are still just auditions unless you are like a mega celebrity and you want to be a spokesperson for something. Right. Commercial auditions are still just six guys walk in and say, hello. And that's what, and then it's just, they're just looking for a look in commercials. There's really not a lot you can do performance wise in a commercial unless it's like a huge campaign. Enjoy and this mustard. Yeah. Hello. Do you like mustard? And that's your only line. They're just looking for a look or just one little minor part of a delivery. Right. And that's the only line they you can have. Tweak. Yeah. Totally. Um, but like if you're going in for you know, a, a sitcom or a TV show, you're going in there for a while. You got to know you're going in there for a while and you got to do your prep. Like if you're not getting a script, if you're getting like a three or four page script and you get it at 8 p.m. and your auditions the next morning at 1130, you are up for four or five hours studying that script, running those lines over and over again. I mean, it's that if you aren't prepped for auditions, they know. And those casting directors will not bring you back. Interesting. And a lot of times, too, which is great. And I love that is the sick. You'll go in there and, and it's a little bit of like a kick in the teeth. They'll be like, hey. So we're just going to improv a couple scenes for a while. And then if we get to the scripts, great. If not, we'd just rather see how you can think on your toes. And I'm like, cool, cool. So I stayed up till three in the morning to read. It's awesome. Yeah, let's let's improv it. Let's I'm glad I'm tired it. right yeah. now. This is, my brain fires perfectly when I've had three hours of sleep. Totally. And you know what the worst part is, is that you were just talking about your superpowers alcohol. I sometimes need to have a little drink, like just to grease the wheels just a little bit. Just a little bit. Josh, these are red flags. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But this just is, do you, do you ever hear the like, Cameron Diaz stories? When no, you say, you, when you say grease the wheels or do you mean get out of bed in the morning? Because no, 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 okay. no, 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 no. Like, let's just say if my you're auditions. Gonna improv or, yeah, uh, yeah. Correct. If I know it's sure. going to be a heavy improv audition and it's at 1.30, I'll have a drink at lunch. You know what I mean? Just one. Sure. What Whatever. are the Cameron Diaz stories? So, so the Cameron Diaz is, a, there are these awesome inside Hollywood stories that like different actresses have told and like weird secrets with Josh Makuka. Um, my wife is is awesome and she's like running she's been an assistant for like some pretty a-list celebrities she's like did you ever hear these stories about cameron diaz doing shots before auditions i'm like no what she's like yeah early on in cameron diaz's career she used to get like drunk before auditions i was like what and and i was like how do you know this and so we're at this party and this woman who's in her early 50s she was like yeah i was cameron diaz's first agent when she was like 18 and i was 21 or something like that and Cameron Diaz used to go into auditions like drunk and nail it. But she said that's how she got over her fear and like her sure. her self-conscious nature sure. of herself and would just go in there and just be Cameron Diaz. But she said that when she would go into auditions dead sober, she couldn't be Cameron Diaz. Interesting. And I, I don't look at it like that Josh McCuga is always drunk. about Mary right? performance. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> or any of her subsequent performances yeah. after that. Hey, now. Hey, we all saw that one she did with Cameron. The mask was great. Come on, her in the mask is. Yeah, the, I love Cameron Diaz. Yeah, I just you know I, I think I, I I still have a bad taste in my mouth from the last time I watched that movie where she traded places with Kate Winslet. Oh, that was. And a, then Kate Winslet fell in uh, love with Jack Black. The and holiday? I was like, what holiday? Fucking movie! What universe does that happen in? What how? What does that happen in? And Jude Law has to like pinch himself to cry at the end because he's like, I'm just a pay-. he's like paycheck, paycheck, paycheck. Ah. Oh. You don't like the holiday? No, it's terrible. Holiday's it's rubbish. Right. It's no right. love, actually. It's no, you're right. Of course. Not few much things is. are. Yeah. Few Can we just agree about yeah, that? Yeah, 100%. Okay. Yeah, come on. We're, two, we're clearly men of different backgrounds yeah. here <laughs> with our beards. Yeah, I know, right? It's, all, <laughs> it's such a weird thing, right? Of like, I don't beep, even know beep, where. Beep. Yeah, it starts. Yes. Like, there's definitely a progression of definitely heaviness and then like the beardness <laughs> and gl- bad eyes. I it just keeps it. going on and on as we go there. It's, um, but like to finish off that thought, it's. Imagine going into a room with like 50 guys that look just like you or a version of you. Oh, I'm at a video game event. <laughs> Correct. Man, that fat white guy's got a beard. <laughs> that fat, they all have glasses too. Shut up. <laughs> and yeah, then you like hear inside, then you hear inside the audition, like not in my backyard. And then you're like, well, should I say it like that? And then yeah, all yeah, of a sudden yeah, yeah, yeah. you're in your head. It's also, so, it sounds, sounds terrible. Right? It sounds but terrible. Now, but but all, let me say this. Let me sure, say, please, so my please, brother, please. my brother in his life has had three jobs, right? And maybe eight interviews. I've had 3000 interviews and like 30 jobs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
That's that's a crazy statistic yeah. when you think about the amount of rejection that you go through, and that's why people leave Hollywood. They, sure. It's when the first time I saw that stupid musical Rock of Ages, that movie. Sure. The movie is terrible. The musical's even worse. Like it is bad. The one they performed in Hollywood, I went to see it at the Pantages in Hollywood, and it ends, and it's like. They followed their dreams, but sometimes your dreams change. And they moved to Glendale and had a baby. And I was like, what? That's a terrible fuck? dream. I was like, that wasn't that their dream. dream at all. What are you doing? <laughs> so a lot of like a, my friend moved back to Baltimore. My other friend moved back to uh, uh, Boston. It like you it, after a while, the rejection just gets to you. And if you haven't booked anything and you haven't done anything. And honestly, too, a lot of actors just come out here and they think, oh, man, I'm good looking. They told it. me in my high school I was good looking. I'm sure. going to go to an audition. I'm going to fucking nail it. And then before you know it, I'm Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is a effing talented dude. And if you meet Tom Cruise, he's one of the most genuinely energetic men you ever meet. Now, I don't know if that's Scientology or if that's how he is, but he looks you in the eye and might he be, talks to you like a person. might be science also. You never know. You know, Maybe some pills in his pocket. We he's don't know. got it. We're not, Come on, Nick. We're not spreading rumors. I'm just saying. Everybody. That's exactly what you're doing. That's exactly <laughs> what you're doing. 100%. It's the star of Mission Impossible right Dude, there. I fucking love Tom Cruise. Yeah. And here's why I appreciate Tom Cruise, because he puts the work in. Totally that's puts why, the work and, in. And I, that's why I think a lot of people, like their career suffers. They get a little bit, and then they fucking self-destruct. Tom had good management around him, whether it was Scientology or not, yeah. or at least or his agents, and they fucking kept him on the narrow. And his work ethic has just driven him through. That motherfucker makes great movies. Yeah. Like, not good, but the last Mission Impossible, I was like, how dare you make Rogue a, good, a movie yeah. that well? It was awesome. No, Fallout. Fallout. Oh, Fallout. Fallout Phenomenal. was great, too. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Um, but you get, you, you know, you get to the point also, too, of you hear these stories about actors that are still working that are impossible to work with. Well, how do they sure. keep getting effing jobs? Yeah, Bruce well, Willis. Yeah, impossible, right? But when was the last time you saw a Bruce Willis movie actually get in theaters? Oh, Most of his no. stuff is going yeah. straight to DVD. Glass? Now. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, Glass. Yeah, your Whoops face. Ping pong. Bang gotcha. Bang. <laughs> no, but, it, but, but there's a damn ping pong. Uh, but there's no doubt that that stuff suffered. And I, I read, there's, you read about that all the time. Ping pong. Ping pong. Gotcha. gotcha. Ping pong. That's what we got there. Ping and pong. He's oh, my two friends. Man. Ping and his, friend, oh. <laughs> his brother Pong. Not related. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> that's that's entertaining. Pink and his brother Pong, Man. not related. <laughs> Nick, <laughs> this big and his adopted brother Pong. Was, gotcha. They were adopted. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. uh, I find it interesting, Nick, that you're so hung up on the audition thing because I think it's I I. I Understand that LA is a different world, yeah. right? And I've talked to other people who will remain nameless until they're one day on the show about yeah. like when we, you talk about, oh, well, every so often there's a conversation about if Kind of Funny should move to LA. Usually it's people outside of Kind of Funny being like, you should move to LA. And yeah. I'm like, I don't know if you know our business that well or yeah. LA that well. Yeah. And like talking to somebody down in LA who is a, a working actor and then being like, do not come down here. Right. There are like four hosts that are getting booked on anything and there's nowhere everybody else is yeah. trying and everybody else is struggling. Everybody else is doing it. And it's this audition and it's grueling. It's breaking yeah. you down in the same way. I think that for you, comedy's break, like trying to be a, com a comic period anywhere, let alone go to punchline over and over and over again, right. get rejected over and over and over again yeah. to go up there, let alone for me, you know, like trying to set out to be in the video game industry back when I tried to do it, when it was like, oh man, there's more rock stars than there are video game journalists. Mm -hmm. And now yeah. it's even worse where there's a million people who want to do this job and can't do it. Like you we're have all to, one in a million in this weird way. 100%. I think too is it's that it's that stupid line, but it 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 makes sense in Catch Me If You Can. When yeah, I love that movie, right? That movie is is almost perfect. I go right. I, I don't think any movie out there is perfect except Bad Boys Two, but that's just me. What about Big? Big is perfect. Thank you. Yeah, um, I saw you tweet that. I was like, I agree. Yeah, uh, Big is. It, man, like, like I think about the end of Big, and I just like, totally. I get teared. I up. did. For uh, did you see this tweet going around? Name your uh, what's a perfect yeah, like, movie to you, and don't be shit on everybody else's right, picks. Right. I said Ghostbusters, Big, and then Into the Spider Verse. So Into the Spider Verse, pretty perfect. Ghostbusters, definitely pretty perfect. Uh, I mean, Ghostbusters is a perfect movie for one that's like just a weird like yeah. nobody grows in it. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, nothing. No real character arc. Nope. They, these guys nope. have a successful business. It's great, <laughs> and they they bust ghosts. It's fantastic. The um the the, the thing that that always that gets me when when uh, Christopher Walken says, you know, the mouse that climbs the cream, the cream rises sure. to the top, right? Is turns it turns it into butter. Turns right? it yeah. into butter, right? Is no, he's a trapped in a he's trapped in cream. A he turns he's it like into a bucket butter. of milk. The, 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 yeah, he cream. falls into the thing. Oh. I don't do it again. No, he said it in uh, Catch, Catch Me If, if you, can. you Can. But maybe uh, what's the movie Mousetrap? The fuck are you talking? Mousetrap about? is with uh, <laughs> do you mean Matthew Rat Race. <laughs> Rat Race is Mouse great, Trap? No, there is a movie called Mousetrap, and I believe it's... Is it Matthew Modine? 
He doesn't look, know. Look that up. I'll, I'll look into it. If Matthew about. Modine is in Mousetrap, I will lose my mind. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, but so What about th- this analogy? No, but I think that to make yourself singular, obviously, to get yourself early, but to make yourself... When you go somewhere, you make yourself memorable and that people want to rehire you is the hardest thing in entertainment. 100%. Absolutely. Because I could go... I mean, I've had so many corporate hosting events and so many people that have hired me again, which is the best feeling in the world, right? Yeah. Is... Uh, you know, like bigger producers, people that have places of power in Hollywood have come up to me and be like, we want to use you for this. There's Mousetrap. Thank you. Is Matthew Modine in there? I like how Kevin's fingers started going around. He was going to find Matthew Modine, but Christopher Walken, Christopher Walken is in, in Mousetrap. Mousetrap. Whoa, about, well, I don't even know what this movie is. Uh, oh, that's I Mouse do. Hunt. Mouse. 1997. Oh. How did you get there? Scroll Swing down to a four. And, 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 <laughs> God, I fucking nailed, nailed it. That's what he was thinking. He nailed it. Whatever mousetrap. I don't the title. Don't look at the title. Wait, movie. you said he wouldn't scroll for a second. Yeah, he yeah. was like, I'm not gonna scroll. Uh, Parent uh, trap. Like, yeah, yeah. Mouse hunt. Mouse trap. There you trap. go. Get, get Lindsay Easy. Lohan in the new mouse trap room. Anyway, uh, regardless, I think we've all done a pretty good job of making yourself singular. Right, like people, when you go somewhere, people remember you. 100 percent. You know, and it I also mean, is. It's, I mean, like everything we do is similar. And I, I shouldn't say that. Everything I do as outside of kind of funny hosting, everything mm-hmm. I would assume Nick does outside of kind of funny comedian, right. everything you do outside of Collider Entertainment is about the relationships you've built. Right. Totally. 100. percent The reason I got the EA Play thing was because I was handpicked to be the host of EA Play because the people putting on EA Play are the same people who produced WWE IGN Esports Challenge. Awesome. And they had liked me enough from the first one to bring me back for two more, right? I've done three or four total. And yeah. then on top of that, be like, oh, we're doing this thing. Do you want to come do this thing? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, it kind of all boils back down to, you know, like my parents were awesome people. Like I'm a very lucky guy that I have both, my mom and dad are both still alive. They're both amazing people. And they always told me the same thing is when you leave a room, make sure people talk about you in a positive way. Mm. It was like it, mm. right? Mm. The golden rule, make sure you treat people how, treat people how you want to be treated yep. and make sure when you leave a room, people talk about you in a positive way. Like I really like Josh. He's a really nice guy. Oh, yeah. It's all I fucking want. I, I, mean, I, had I, want. A, I had a screenwriter professor, my only screenwriting professor tell me, uh, and this is, Pretty much the only piece of information I, I took from this class. <laughs> but she was like, you know, the old the rule in Hollywood is show up on time and be fun to work with. Right. And that stuck with me. Totally. Because when people do that with me, I go, cool. I like that person. I would like to work with that person again. 100%. They didn't waste my time by being an asshole and showing up two hours late or whatever. Right. And they were on set, present, or wherever we were present, ready to put the work in. Yep. Whatever I needed them to do or whatever they needed me to do, we're there for each other. Yep. And that, that does go a long way. Yeah. But the reason I'm so obsessed with L.A. is because obviously uh, there was a there was a moment in my life where it was either stay here and grind out LA or go up to this company I've never heard of that little known company called IGN yeah. uh, and, and start cutting my teeth up there. And so there's always a sliding doors sure. aspect of me. Great move. Is IGN you know? headquarters here? Here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They used to he be was a, saying stay here as in stay in LA oh, or right. come up to SF. So I, I was, I'm from Southern California. Oh, yeah. And when I got Riverside, the, Riverside, IE, uh, when I, Empire. when Inland I got Empire. till IDE, IE till IDE. Exactly. Exactly. is what they say. You got that great. I mean, I, I had a Uber driver who was like, yeah, you know, I'm from LA. I was like, Oh, whereabouts? He goes, San Bernardino. And I'm like, I'm like, brother, I'm from Riverside. Let's not fucking, you know, <laughs> I'm not trying to be bougie yeah. here. Okay. But Ellis and I, I have this joke. You you're from fucking Los Angeles. Ellis and I have this joke. It's such like, like a Californian's joke is like, if the gig says, so you're going to get on the 60 freeway. I'm out. I'm done. Damn. As soon as they say the 60, I'm out. You ain't trying to go to that. I'm not trying to go to the Unless it's a water slide park where there's a sick one in in Redlands. Uh There's a sick water slide park in Redlands. When you walk in, it looks like a castle. It's what you imagine Bill and Ted's sending Napoleon to. Yeah. Nice. Oh, dude. That was Raging Waters, wasn't it? I think so, but it's not that. It's not not called Raging Waters anymore. I don't know what it's called, but it was called Raging Waters. What a waste of water. Yeah. Uh, No, so obviously for me, I'm from Southern California. when When I got, hey, man. What are you trying Shit, to water doesn't grow on trees. The water park is the least of this planet's problems. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, you know, when I got the call to to come in for for uh, the job interview, I thought it was going to be in a, in L.A. because that's uh, where I interviewed. So my, my yeah. former boss, then now one of our the people we work with here, Fran, uh, flew down and I interviewed in Culver City. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. Like I've never seen this place, but I could I could work here. Sure. I mean, I could actually probably even still live in Orange County and drive in every day. I was naive. Um, but I was like, I cool, this is, the, all the time yes. this is the start of something. And then, you know, eight months later, whenever Frank got around to fucking calling me back, 
and offering me the job, he was like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, that job's actually in San Francisco. Oh, well, you know, yeah, we gotta actually move up to SF. Yeah, we, uh, I was like, but I don't understand. It's supposed to be a job for, actually, the job was supposed to be for a, uh, a company that IGN owned, which is called GameSpy. And GameSpy, if you remember, was uh, was located yep. in Costa Mesa, and I lived in Irvine. Oh, so true. that would have been a five-minute commute. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is going to be the coolest and the thing. the commute because- in L.A. is everything. Everything. Oh my god! Well, I mean, in Orange County, the commute's not quite as bad. Yeah. Uh, but it would have been lovely to be like a twenty-minute yeah. the job, the ride in my job, where there was no boss because he was up in San Francisco. Like this is gonna be fucking great. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that it ended up being in San Francisco uh, because I think that obviously we couldn't have foreseen what tech would be up here or what sure. YouTube would be like. I had no fucking idea. Yeah. Um, it also led to this successful business, your wife, a whole bunch of other things. Yeah. Well, that's what I, I'm getting. That's what I'm saying. Like, right? It's like <laughs> if I could not have meant when I when I got the job at IGN. In San Francisco, I thought I'm going into games. This is not entertainment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I knew that. I was like, "You are part of you." Is I felt was copping out of of my dream of being a filmmaker. Um, I was like, "You're letting yourself down. You're taking a paycheck." And the other part of me is like, "No, you have no experience and no connections whatsoever, and you're and making living, movies is really tough. You're not even man. living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. You're you're literally go. I was literally asking my mom to take me to lunch like on a weekly basis so I could get a meal big enough to like be year. dinner also. Uh, dude, you know? when I lived in New York. Uh, I was, I lived in with, it, in, with three of my buddies from college. We had a four bedroom apartment in this like loft space, but my bedroom was legitimately the closet. It didn't have a locking door. It was big enough for a twin bed. I'd open a pocket door. I would crawl into my bed. I built a shelving unit around my, my bed just so I could live in New York to like audition and yeah. whatever and, and bartend and stuff. And I, my parent, my dad came to visit me first. Cause my, my he's like, I don't want your mother to see this. He's like, I gotta go there for business. And he came in and he was like, Oh. You sure this is what you want to do? Like this yeah. is this is what you want to do? And I was like, yeah, man, I'm having a blast. I don't care where I live. This is just a bed at the end of the day. Yeah. Is it a hard place to bring girls back to? Yeah, it's not the best. Right, but you break the cardinal rule, but, you bring them home with you. You go yeah, to their house. Yeah, yeah, it's the Nick Scarpino rule. Yeah, yeah. And then you hope to God you know where you are. Always you play away games. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, you don't have to wear the good uniform. <laughs> but, but it was... New York was so crazy expensive that I was all I ate during the week was apples and bananas, like fruits that I could get for under a dollar at the end of the day at the fruit cart in my neighborhood yeah. because they were throwing it all away. Yeah. And I was like, hey, what do you guys have? Can I if I give you two bucks, will you give me what I was literally just begging for food yeah. because I had no money to do anything else because New York was so expensive. But this was like this is what I thought was the dream is you you're sacrifice hustling, everything you're doing the thing. Yeah. And you learn. I think I think the beauty of life sometimes is is that hustle is the people that have never had to hustle in their life. For instance, my wife was the assistant to an A-list Hollywood celebrity. Oh, I thought he was going to just say I was going to be like, like damn, bad Josh, brother. My a. stupid effing wife. No. Jesus. My, <laughs> Kevin doesn't get the wife jokes that well. Uh, my like, wife was that. the assistant to a, uh, an A-list celebrity in Hollywood for a long time. If I told you his name right now, you would know who he is. Sure. And I've told you guys Benicio his name before. And, uh, correct. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was going to say his name. I almost said his name. So... This guy is is absolutely worthless, right? And he has no idea how to take care of himself. He has no idea how to take sure, care of himself. Sure. So my wife was basically his mother. If he had no, he didn't know how to book a flight. He didn't know how to book his own air travel. He he asked her, "When you call a hotel, will they just know my name?" What? <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Uh, so I think like part of the hustle is is knowing full well that sacrifice is a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure. Like, if you if you don't have the stories, what's the point? What's the point? Yeah, well, it's always the sweet without the sour, right? Yeah, you never right? know how good it is unless right? it's been bad before. If you've, totally. had, if you've had a storm somewhere. We talked uh, during the 12-hour the live stream on, sure. the, on the roof back there sure. about, like, how you kind of got into it. And this is always yeah. what you wanted to do. You wanted to be a video game writer because you always love video games yeah. and stuff like that. I think it's... I think the, the most difficult part for somebody is looking at somebody following the dream and seeing what following the dream looks like. Sure. Well, the problem is it's so much blind faith. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's exactly what you're talking about with your dad coming in. You know, is this really what you want to do? Like right. when you're on the outside, by the way, the sirens are on our end. Also, mm-hmm. by the way, uh, we're brought to you by hello fresh and liquid IV, but I'll talk oh, about that later. Shit. I love uh, both of those companies with all my heart. Our grand way. Yeah. cursed right. When I mention their names, they're going to love that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's the idea that you, when you're passionate about it, when you're driving towards something, when you're making the choices, you see how point A is eventually going to get to Z right. or hope it'll get to Z. Mm. Whereas when a parent or a girlfriend or a whoever, if someone on the outside steps in and they go, 
wait, how? Like, right. I, like it's a tired story for me, but I remember when I got the job at the newspaper after college, going to a Mizzou tailgate, uh, or yeah, and it was uh, or maybe a graduation party for somebody else. And one of my friend's father, who's awesome and still is awesome, came yeah. up and he's like, I heard about the job at the paper. That's awesome. I'm like, thanks. And he goes, how does that get you to games? How does it? And he, and he asked, it was an honest question of yeah. somebody who's been invested in my life for four years now sure. and knows me well and knows what the dream is. But it was the first time that I was like, oh, other people don't see it. Other right. people don't understand what moves I'm making here. And totally. I remember with my girlfriend at the time, uh, her mom making a comment in the car home, me having to be like to the girlfriend, like, I'm close and I can't tell you, like, I know that I'm close. This is, we're getting there. This is making the steps I need to make to be the dream, yeah. but it's hard to see it when you're not in the moment. I, see, I've had people, sorry, I've had people say to me, you, do you ever, yeah, like, fair. this is, you know, do you ever have, do you, do you ever, do you ever hate not making a lot of money? And I was like, how much money do you know how much money I have? Exactly. Like, you, and, and I'm well, not saying I'm. an NBA jam shirt, so not that much. Dumb, <laughs> so I'm fucking loaded. Uh, <laughs> is. I was like, first of all, you don't know how much money I have. And sometimes, I, I mean, I know this is such an old cliche, but money doesn't exactly exude happiness. Sure. But like I was saying last weekend is sometimes I just miss my wife. Like I love just hanging out on the couch with my wife for a weekend. Oh, yeah. Like it's great, right? Yeah, it's 100%. the best. People like uh, those 1984 stands. your wife. Yeah. Oh, does she? Does he? <laughs> Does she? No, he's, 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 he's just hyping out. Hey, yeah, it's just like you hey, get wife. it. When you like getting married and, and being in love with somebody is amazing. And when they see your dream and they support the dream, and that's that's also part of it, too, is yeah. when somebody supports the dream, right? Yeah. Well, that, that, like that, to, to go back to what Greg was saying, like the idea of blind faith, like I, I don't even know that I had that in myself. I just, like you've always been, one of the things that I really respect about you is you've always been strategic. There's you come off like a fucking maniacal, like a maniacal maniac, like yeah, a monster, true. True. a person who just doesn't understand how humanity works, about, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a person who's like you're like how much alcohol can one man drink? Yeah, that's why <laughs> is I mean, that Josh even legal? Yeah, yeah. Is that safe? But yeah. in the back of your brain, you're always strategizing. Drink. Sure. You're out there. You're out there seeing the moves ahead of time, and that's something totally. that, I, that I've tried sure. to learn from you because when I was <laughs> early, like it. when I was early on, um, I didn't have an idea of what strategy was. Yeah. And that's what I, that's when, when I see people now, like comics or uh, people in this area that go, I'm just gonna move to LA. I'm like, it's not that's gonna not the work. Solution, that's right? Yeah, right? That's like, not the if, 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 your, if your strategy is so terrible up here that you can't make it work, putting yourself in a bigger pool of talent to draw from probably yeah. isn't gonna be the best thing for you, right? Because I think I see a lot of people that go, well, I'm just gonna go and you know, I'll do, I'll mic and I'll try to get shows and things like that. I'm like, but there's but so even much miking more. now is real tough. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, and there's so much more to it than that. Like, people always ask me, like, again, going back to the strategy question. I mean, the re the real reason why we have following is because we have we have platforms, we totally. have places that people can but see guys, us on a daily basis. But you guys also one produce a ton of content. To produce good content. Well, we we learned early on, and I think this was something that well, that, that's arguable. Debatable. That's arguable. arguable. I think this show's I good, mean, but you offend them a little bit. Yeah, you offend them a little bit. Um, but you know, like this, it it, it it's definitely tough. Is all I'm saying. It's, yeah. it, it's tough because people go, I got a dream and I got motivation and I think I got a little bit of talent and that's going to be. But but I don't have a heart to tell people. I'm like, that's fifty percent of the game. The other fifty percent is an X factor that you. I don't know what it's going to be. No. For me, it was IGN. And it was meeting Greg and it was being able to work with that, that, that. I mean, it's all that all those things that came together that finally I was like, it was it's like a, one of those weird like stellar cartography charts like in, in The Last Jedi. <laughs> You're telling us where this thing, go, you know, where they put the thing together and goes boom. And I go, oh, shit, I you see it. Now. See through, yeah, I yeah, see yeah. through that now. And then it kind of moved. And I was like, no, no, no. Now You're I know what we're going to do. Like I remember sitting on Eric, Eric's couch uh, Eric, with Eric and Jen. Um, and they were like, what are you going to do? Because I was like, I want to quit IGN. I don't know what to do. And they're like, what are you going to do? I was like, I think I really want to like be an Internet creator. And Eric's like, that's not going to work. There's no way that's going to work. And I was like, no, I think it is because I, I finally see the missing elements, the Patreon sure. and the fact that Greg and Tim and everyone's like all on the same page with me and we're all like going out. And I'm like, I think we could do this. And it works. But that's, that's I think, that one of the hardest things for people to grasp is I'm like, you don't even know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. It's like sure. we, I've had friends, younger guys from up here that go, I just want to be an actor. I'm going to go down to LA. I'm like, it's not going to work. Yeah. It's not going to work because you're going to go to catacall call auditions. You're going to burn out. You're not going to know anyone. And you don't understand that there's more to being a personality than just getting a gig. I think the, the other thing, too, is I, I talked earlier about like being lonely, right? Or being alone. Yeah, and I wanted to come back to that. Yeah, is... Uh, 
I've been the guy that has been able, like when I would do road gigs, I love finding the town bar and becoming friends with locals. So and now, I can say that about you. And yeah. just to dial it all back, when you mean road gigs, you mean you're in Phoenix, Arizona, and you're doing a two night stint at a place doing comedy club? No. What are you doing? Oh, thanks, dude. Thanks, Bear Bear. Like no, I tip um, like I'm doing some college gigs and some podunk, like college sounds. Sure. Uh, I'm oh, doing, college you know, gigs. like I'm opening for college gigs. You think they're great? No, I don't think they're great. No, it's tough. I, I have a lot of friends really who actually brutal. do colleges now. They go, they have managers. I guess this, I guess there's a whole, Guys. this is things that I've learned. There's a whole management structure at agencies and places and like promoters oh, yeah. that are just well, college, college gigs are very profitable for agents and managers, yeah. but they are miserable for the comedians. Yeah. Like, because, okay, for instance, imagine going to, uh, um, I think it was Frostburg State University yeah, in Maryland. I go there. I go no, there. it's in Maryland. It's great not place. in a great spot of Maryland. You know, like kind of like in, you're like, oh, Maryland on the Chesapeake. No, no, no. In the <laughs> inland part where like people get, get murdered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. The crabs don't make it that far inland. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I got killed by gun violence. I was like, I look at the, the booking because like you would get bookings via email and I'd be on the road. So I would like fly into a certain part of the East Coast or the Midwest or the South, which was they did not get my comedy. That's for sure. Um, some of those South kicks were rough. Like I'd have to just on the flight because a lot Who of my likes the upper mobility of minorities. Wait a minute, wall right? Oh no, roll, roll Todd. <laughs> this is the wrong college, stupid. Oh right. So uh, no, like war, you're, damn eagle. <laughs> war damn eagle. So Sorry, I, I was everybody in, from the South. <laughs> our bad on that one. Our bad. They're like just not all of us. Just like half my family. Skizip so, is punching through her hat <laughs> yeah. right now. So I was in. I was at Frostburg State in uh, in Maryland, and I look at my booking, and it's two p.m. And I'm like, two p.m. A two p.m. comedy is the best. I was in the cafeteria yeah. during transition, mm. entertaining mm. college students for an hour. Yeah, it's an hour because you when you get booked at a college, it's an hour. You have to fill an hour. So that's terrible. Like I have at that point, I've been doing stand up for like two plus years. So I had had I had like, you know, 90 minutes to two hours of material that I knew was pretty good. And when I say pretty good, I was pretty psyched about like 45 minutes of it. Oh, see, the other 45 that, minutes was good. And the other 30 impressive. was like, this is a new bit I'm working on. So like, you know, when you guys like order a soda and they don't like put more ice in it. Ugh, it's not the worst. All right, yeah. let's move on. I got to talk about that. So I'm like, I'm doing All 30. I'm doing like 15 minutes of material. And you just hear some dude in the back go. Come on, man. I'm trying to study. Like, I just got thrown into a study hour doing stand up at the student cafeteria. This I don't some, know. This is some dumb fuck student that's and like, this is going to be the thing I'm doing for the other my part, fellow students. Is this is supposed to be entertainment for the, because the, the university gets so much money to provide entertainment that isn't drinking. All sure. the university wants is entertainment that's not drinking yeah. because students are just binge your drinking. Whole act is. My whole act is like, you guys are blacked out drunk and like, yeah. If not, so, you should try it tonight. So I was like, at the nighttime gigs, I'd be drinking with the students. Mm -hmm. And then the college would be like, hey, um, so we didn't really want you like drinking with the students. And I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> so never got back, invited back to those no, schools. Too bad. And then like the sober gigs were like all the kids that were just kind of, so the, um, there's no swearing in this show, just yeah. so you know. And I'm like, listen, I'm not the dirtiest of comics, but I'm not the cleanest of comics I'm either. Bomb, you're talking right? about some vaginas, yeah, of some course. fallopian tubes. Yeah, I've seen your not, act, yeah. uterus size. <laughs> And nothing like a good fallopian joke. Mons. <laughs> Some Mons you ever talk. Most fallopian tubes look like antlers. <laughs> 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 that y'all got kicked in, ladies and gentlemen. You guys ever notice how it looks like antlers? It looks like a tree That's, with no leaves on it. You can use it. You can take it. Anytime. Hook them horns. So those were like, those were kind of soul sucking gigs where. Comics talk about bombing, but imagine bombing and going off stage and then going hang out with your buddies at a bar afterwards. Then imagine bombing and driving alone to the next gig. Sure. Mm. It got alone real quick. Yeah, I can understand that. I, I've been there. I mean, I haven't yeah. been there on college gigs, but I've been there where I've driven up like two, two and a half hours mm -hmm. to, to, you know, uh, Northern California areas. Did not do well. Yeah. And I've and it's, it's almost like I've driven up with a couple comics and like one of us didn't do well and it's like oh shit, shit. like how do we talk about it it's, be it's nice hard to on the way home. it sucks because you can't like yeah. i'm still at a point where if i bomb pretty heavily at a show that i actually care about uh because i do a lot of shows that i'm like this is yeah. gonna be just fun i'm just gonna have fun right. but if it's a show that i'm like oh there's people there that i respect and there's a big audience that's paying um and i bomb in that it stays with you until the next one yeah. you got to kind of wash it off with the next gig it's it, the, the tough thing too is i think there's a huge difference between being alone and being by yourself right mm, like being being by yourself is just like 
let me let me just be by myself for a little bit. Being alone is kind of a tough look. Like it's hard. Sure. And especially when you're alone on stage and you're bombing, like that's the most alone Oof. you could ever that's be. Not fine. And no matter what you do, because I've been up there before and like let's say I gotta fill an hour. Like I've done country club gigs that are corporate gigs. And I get there and there's a stage and the crowd is rowdy and it's the best hour I've ever done. Like, oh, you guys want to see a card? And I throw the deck into the crowd. Like, it doesn't matter. It's a corporate game. You can wear that F you want. Like, you could literally do anything. And especially if you're like in the Inland Empire or you're somewhere like in between San All Diego right, and LA. Let's not say it like that. Like, it's fucking Mad no, Max beyond anything, Thunderdome and no, Riverside. But anything, anything outside of especially LA. Especially when you're in the Inland Empire where they fucking eat anything. each other. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. Like, if you go to the Ice House in Pasadena, every booker in LA knows if you kill at the ice house you can't kill in la like really? it's it's so weird my best set to the point where i had a i like had to put the microphone down and just have them keep laughing i was like i don't know what is going on here right now like this is so silly is that, is that because I was the ice dating, house is where a lot of people from out of town come in i don't know it's in pasadena which is only 40 yeah. 30 minutes outside but, I mean, of la you, you figure if you're gonna go to pasadena you're probably gonna go someplace close like the improv right, store right you know but so I, I killed. I only did 10 minutes and I destroyed. And this waitress comes up to me like, I mean, I see a lot of people laugh, but they were fucking laughing. That was awesome. And this, I see the booker because it was for the show called Comedy Juice. And he's like, try it at the improv in Hollywood. And I did like half the laughs. And I was like, God, that's it's like it. It burns the soul that people that want to laugh, laugh. And then people in L.A. come to be like, make me laugh. I'm right. a jaded person. That, I've been on 15 that, auditions today and everything sucks. Everything I'm sucks. here entertaining my mom and dad <laughs> from Ohio. Help. <laughs> if you're not Joe Rogan, yeah. you better be like him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You better talk about psychedelic drugs and hunting. Yeah. Uh, but I, we said that up here, though, honestly. Like in San Francisco, it's a little tougher. But if you go to the yeah. outskirts, like I've gone to, I, I'm, I've really pushed myself in the last few months to isn't get there, out of San Francisco. Doesn't like Sacramento have a club? So I've gone to Sacramento. Sacramento's yeah. got a couple clubs. Yeah. Um, they've got Sacramento Punchline. And I'm sure they have more than this, but they have Sacramento Punchline and Laughs Unlimited. Okay. Uh, and I just did Laughs Unlimited for the first time it was a fucking blast see and i and i don't i mean again every audience is different i may be a be over generalizing here but i just feel like those areas are people want to go to a comedy club at night they're excited about it they're like this is a cool thing it's for them they out. don't do yeah. it all the time yeah. it's not necessarily you know you're in more of a suburban area so you know you're not doing shit all the time oh, mom and dad want to get out and, yeah. and chuck it up and, and that's dude, and, and sometimes though i mean listen as much as I com comedians complain about bombing a lot and complain about bad audiences, I've had way more good audiences than bad audience. It's mm -hmm. just you. It's it's not, like Nick has another. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the you. It's that you that one YouTube comment that like you still remember. Oh sure, yeah. And then you have a thousand awesome mm -hmm. ones that like Greg, I love you, Nick, I love you, Josh, you're the best. And then you see that one is like, yo, why does Makuga's like double chin come in too much? I'm like, <laughs> like I'm a, fuck yourself. What? Or like really? when, you're, when your director just keeps calling you short over and over again. Yeah, like that's let's push him up biting. a little. Just, just fucking push Kevin. him up. <laughs> um, do you no, ever, but, did you ever try stand up? Did you ever do it? I've you done did it, it once. The Nick stuff. I've done it twice. Thanks for remembering. Yeah. They were both your shows. That's great. Which was did one? you do? I mean, I'm, I did it at RTX. Oh, you did, that's right. You did, did it in the you're a funny Francisco. guy. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Greg, like, I mean, see, the, the thing about the, the power with Greg, though, is that like you didn't even come in necessarily with material that you'd rehearsed. You had a kind of a storyline element yeah, that you wanted to say. Yeah, normal talking. That's shit. your yeah. style. Though. Yeah, a little yeah. more exaggerated in terms of being able to but move like, around. Yeah, my the reason I never got Montreal or I never got a lot of the bigger festivals is because I would go up and tell a ten minute story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and with jokes in between it, and then and the people would be like. So I don't know if we can like book you for a three minute show at Just for Laughs. Do you have a three minute story? And I'm like, laughs, I don't though. think that I was can. My three that was, yeah. <laughs> you guys asked for it. ten. I filled ten. Yeah. You know what I mean? I because half my half my life has been the absurdity of the story. My brother is always like, Oh God, you're gonna get a story out of this weekend, aren't you? I'm like, Oh yeah, probably. You know what I mean? And that's but that's a style. And you know, like that's like a, like like Burt Kreischer is, is a perfect totally. example of that. He's a storyteller. Like Bert, Bert and his Kreischer's is so ridiculous. Burt Kreischer's Russia story has nothing on my Italy story. I mean, there's there is nothing. I, mean, I heard he stole close. a lot of that from you. He's totally, 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 fucking hack. totally. What's he's crazy is that that Burt's rep is my rep now. So it's I mean, like that's kind of you like guys have very similar styles. Let's yeah, put it that way. I just don't take my shirt off. Well, on you could, but I could if I wanted. You're gonna look out better. My favorite part about that story is you're like. Oh, Burt Kreischer. I was like, I've heard that name before. He was like a comedian in the 50s. <laughs> like, no idea who the fuck you're talking about. It, it, is, very, it is very weird. Like, I, I found myself, obviously, like when I started doing comedy, becoming a really, like, 
silly to say, but a bigger fan of comedy sure. yeah. because I was like, oh, I've always like I came to the conclusion. I was like a lot of the people that I look up to are comics. Uh, they're people that I feel are uh, brave in that they can go out on a limb and say kind of crazy shit or stuff that's thought provoking in a way in a time where that might not be the best idea to do on the Internet. Sure. So when I started getting into it, I started really learning people and it's yeah. become sort of a hobby of mine to follow these people and see what the scenes like outside of San Francisco. But don't you think it's kind of like the same thing as like, OK, you guys are in video games. If you didn't play video games and didn't know anything about video games, you couldn't talk about them. If I didn't watch movie or st- movies or TV, I couldn't work at Collider. I mean, that's just doing your due diligence, right? right? When I wanted to write the kids book, I went out and bought a bunch of kids books and read right. those, right? When I obviously I read comic books when I wanted to do comic book stuff, I went out and read that stuff. Totally. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall when you're like, I'd like these 18 kids books, please. <laughs> oh, how old is your kid? Oh, I don't have one. No, <laughs> oh, no, but I, I got this character called the Grabbler. Yeah, uh, yeah he's, not, he's, he's, he's not a kidnapper, okay. but he's not above it. Yeah, but his, his best friend. <laughs> See, like the woman next to her, grab her, like, uh, grab the kid tighter. Come here, Jenny. You, do you do that a lot, by the way? What's when you're it? walking with your wife, you're like, let's steal this kid. <laughs> totally. I say it all the time. No, my wife and I have these. If there's one thing I wish I could rewind time because I just love to see what would happen if I was like, hey, and they're like, hey, oh, nice. Ah, what the fuck? <laughs> what do they do next? No. I'm like, it's a prank. It's a prank. And then I rewind time and it's just for me. It's a little yeah. show for Greg. Yeah. The best yeah. thing about being married yeah. is the constant inside joke. Sure. Sure. Period. Mm-hmm. That you have with your wife. Sure. Right. Like my wife and I have this inside joke where I always whisper ways I'm going to kill her and she has ways, ways she's going to kill me. Yeah, like it's funny. Right. right? Hot. Uh, we have like when we see a kid, we're like, that kid's creepy. And she's yeah, like, oh, totally. that kid is creepy. Right. Like we have like creepy Thanks, kids Joe. kind of a thing. Oh. Joe read my mind on what we needed because I, I put that out. Ice and bourbon for audio listeners. Nicely Ice done. Ice and bourbon. No, I mean, and that actually leads me to another question sure. I had for you. Uh. But again, like, and I love you, Josh. You know sure. that. You're obviously you a, you're a best friend now. You're mm-hmm. a member of the Kind of Funny family. One day, I hope Collider implodes. Uh, LA implodes. You get to move up here and work for us. I think there's only one dream of mine. It would be that somehow there'd be like a giant entertainment city that was birthed in the middle sure. between sure. San Francisco and LA. And we could all work together. Barstow. There. It's uh. called the 15 to 10, baby. <laughs> I got a vibe vibe from you but it turns out again you're very you've done internet stuff a lot longer than i've known you so people know you better and again to pull from the friend zone and i'm just letting people out of the friend zone left and right today mike olson says what made you come around to marriage been following you for years and the wild man was always against marriage great to see how happy you are now reminds me of my wife and i yeah and that's the thing you've you've mentioned obviously amanda so many times on this one right uh obviously and many a time and and i've I've wanted her to come up to meet you guys all the time because she hears about you guys nonstop. kevin is creepy but kevin it's all kevin really he's my wife saw a picture of kevin's wife and she was like i looked over kevin's not there so this is is just just (laughs) totally insulting someone who's not part of the joke it's (laughs) your wife's erica right barrett Wow, Alyssa! What a miss! What? What? Again? Alyssa! Alyssa! His, his fiance. Yeah, we're also, yeah, we're also not married yet. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're yet. engaged though. Yeah. Just got engaged. Yes. Yeah. I saw the picture. It looked amazing. Uh, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Nothing more fun. Sorry about than that. Talking man. about talking shit. But she's about the how teacher, Kevin right? Do things yeah. right. Look at yeah. over. He's not doing his job. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> So, so yeah, so the wild, the wild man. Of course, yeah, I was really, I was really against marriage, and and I'll be honest with you. Um, one rule, like first thing is, I I hadn't met Amanda yet. And I think that's 100%. Uh, two is I've been burned a lot in my life. And I think that it was mostly because I was just dating actresses mm. and, and that mm. what they tell you in LA is 100% true. Like it's that, that weird noise that Nick just made of, <laughs> well, so here, so here, one of the reasons that I think <laughs> that's, that's the rule is like, okay, for actors instance, are tough to be around sometimes because actors or actresses uh, or yeah, don't use it, I'm just using oh, do, oh, is that we do as collective I'm I don't know I'm asking you yeah I don't like to use the word it. actress I think it's I think it's silly to, to I think they I think reason. they stopped doing that oh, yeah oh, God. I just say actors um they live a hard life where re, like rejection is a, is a, is a part of that and they totally. also have to always sort of be a little fake yes um and I think that it's very difficult as as far as the actors that I've known that are my friends to for them to leave the audition and and leave the fakeness with them there. Yeah, they're always sort of acting a little bit, and it's difficult because you start seeing that like but, sometimes that act, that that is a facade for some insecurities that are there. But the hard part is in L.A. is that most of the good-looking girls, if not all of the good-looking girls, are actresses or want to be actresses. or want to be actresses right. or work in some level of entertainment. Right. So it is hard, like. You could meet a very lovely girl at a bar who's attractive and is working as a, I don't know. She is barista. A, thank you. And that's all she wants to real be. Estate she, maybe fantasy, she's trying to open up her own, her own. Co- no, no, no. Bur- uh, the real estate agents in LA, they're all actresses. Yeah. That's or failed actresses. Say, yeah. Real estate because yeah. that's where totally. the fantasy is going. Let's start okay, with that. Real estate. Yeah. yeah. 
or like they work for their dad's automotive company and that's that, right? That's that's what they yeah, want to do. Specific. But that Let's is that so... <laughs> or they work you for know, their dad's automotive company in Culver She City. lives in Hollywood in 46. Dad <laughs> runs in a successful audio. Let's just say for the sake that she's about five foot six. Five brunette. six, brunette, oh, piercing God. blue eyes. Whoa. Very Italian Whoa. last name. yes. Uh, where are we going with this? Are we what I'm saying, no, are you saying there's... No, no. What, so what it was was that... Each one was lovely, but I could see them getting bored really mm. quick after about three months, four months. And I'm, by no means was I like a serial monogamous that I would go from like girlfriend to girlfriend to girlfriend. I could just see them getting bored really quick where they're like, uh, I don't think like, I'm just going to go with the girls tonight. And I know that what that the, means. Yeah. Yeah. And then I would have, no, I, I feel like, the, I mean, you're being, LA, nice. LA you're being is, nice. I mean, people, most people in LA are a bit on the superficial side and people are users in LA. I think most is a very gross generalization. I think a lot. If you're of, in the entertainment industry and you're trying to climb, you're trying to network. I think that it behooves you. Let's take a positive look at this. Okay. It behooves you to not necessarily be nailed down yep. to to a person that you have to be home at a certain Especially time. Especially in a, in, a com- in a in a in an industry that let's be honest that is well known for being in an industry of misogynists and guys that are. Really I don't even mean it that. I just mean like, and this is this is always a this is always something that I I, I think about and I talk to when when we you know I'm friends with like younger comics and I'm like you cannot. If you if you need to be able to go do a gig right now, you, or or go meet with someone, or go get drinks with someone, you it's it's hard to have someone that is holding you back at home. Yeah, you know. And so when you're young, especially if you're going to be an actor, and I don't think this is. I mean, we were I'm kidding around that it's symptomatic of just females, but like in general, even a lot of guy no, actors, I like think it's male you too. just have to be able to do what you got to do. Yeah. And so I think what that leads to and is it, you're less committal than anything else. Does that make but, sense? And I think that falls into the category of anybody chasing their dream, doing this thing, totally. right? Like where it is of like even now where it's like a kind of funny problem pops up. And again, my wife, an amazing woman who understands yeah. what I'm doing, if I don't, like there was a, the, recently a thing popped up and it was like, we were getting ready to go on vacation and I was up and she's like, we gotta go to bed. We're getting, and I'm like, it's a work thing. And then the next morning she's like, what was that about? And I, I explained, she's like, well, why didn't you say that? You said yeah. it's a work thing. That doesn't make any sense. When you tell me the severity of the problem you're trying to totally. fix. It's, I think my wife really, really gets it. And a lot of girls didn't. Mm-hmm. And a lot of girls kind of looked at what I did or what I was doing as either like less than what they were doing sure. or got jealous of what I was doing. Like, why don't you ever have me on your podcast? And I was like, mm-hmm. well, you don't, you don't really, I, I you guess you're talking about the same yeah, thing. Yeah. You're not, you, well, that, and you're not really doing anything that is, would warrant me to put you on the podcast. And I, that's hard that to say to somebody. Doesn't go over well. Doesn't go over well. Yeah. Uh, my wife also, which is amazing, works outside of inter- entertainment, has, has, has like digs in entertainment, but she works in fashion and, but she also gets it. Like if I need to go for drinks for four nights in a row, she totally gets it. Like that's a whole thing. That was my next question for you too. Yeah. I mean, this is all in the same vein. You mentioned, you know, going out, I, if I want to go out with the girls tonight, right? In terms of uh, your uh, former lovers getting yeah. bored and wanting to leave or whatever. Like friends seen her cheating you out, talk, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You talk about though, you being a regular at all these different bars and stuff. I was wondering how you balance that. Cause is Amanda coming out with you? Is that happening? Um, She likes to. Yeah. But, uh, and, and my wife is very, very social, but she, she'll be like, if you want to go out tonight, go ahead. No problem. Yeah. And I'll run to the comedy store and either do a set or just hang out for a bit, that's, or that's so I will do, you know, I'll go and cool. just hang out at Barney's or just have a drink up the street, whatever it is. Yeah. And she knows that's like a part of my life and that's important it's to part me. part of the job, It's right? part of the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I was, I was talking to a guy today, uh, who's a, a you know, a publicist and we're talking about the Comic-Con panels and stuff like sure. that. And he's like, are you talking hey, to Barrett? Yes, correct. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> It, talking about, you know, like, come meet me for a drink. Come meet this guy for a drink. Let's go for a drink. Let's go. And, and I always tell Amanda, I was like, listen, if you want to come, yep. by all means, because yep. my my wife is a great wingman. Oh, yeah. She's great. Not only that. is she super fun and she knows how to conversate and she she's like sort of like my biggest cheerleader, which makes sense. But she's also very pretty. So guys are, you know, like more inclined to I talk to her that. than. I haven't noticed that at all. But all of your, I've never seen your wife because you don't bring her around or post pictures. Okay, first opposite. off, fuck and you. Your, and your wife, wife has is come gorgeous. up to SF for you to come film my show and she doesn't come to my house. Come and not so once. You, have no, you don't have a leg to stand in. Again, uh, I mean, even though we've talked about it a million times, shut up, Nick, that you're the better Nick. Yeah. This is just more examples of you being the better Nick. You're still Nick. Your wife doesn't I don't come think to he's anything. the better Nick. I think I'm just the worst I, Josh. The thing is, I just don't know where Carboni falls into the equation. <laughs> Carboni's the, he can fuck himself. Carboni's he's so the, good looking. Carboni's That's the clear glasses do. version of the Oh book, my God. Have you seen him lately? Because he's getting like the peppered side, a little oh, bit of gray he's on the adorable. side. He's adorable. He's a love. He's, he's so you like my pepper? You're, no, gonna, you're, you're a handsome man. You're a handsome man in your own right. And you know I love you and I will forever fight for you over Carboni. But 
that guy just yeah he's a good looking dude he's got a little something something yeah, yeah. you know he's great too i mean we're all italians i mean what do you gotta do i mean that's when you're perfect you're perfect yeah i mean you we all let's be honest we all we all got very lucky including <laughs> I, I, i'm holding I one i'm holding I tried, one. I, tried to, I tried to look at you like you were a, like a like a, a bratwurst that went bad that's what i wanted to look like oh don't pick that thing up off the ground and i, I was gonna and I, my, what i was gonna be like <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah italians what do you always call them Master race. That's right. That's what you're asking. <laughs> oh, no, wow. Yowza. Wow. I don't know that I get that. Bada bing, bada boom. Steer away from that. Um, Bing pong. <laughs> Bing pong. <laughs> These are my two friends. Ping and pong. No relation. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. But that's. So when you met. Like, so marriage. Yeah, so how does uh, your so story go with a man? When you meet her, do you know immediately? So uh, I have this, this saying um, where I, everybody asks me how I'm doing. I say, I'm living the dream, baby. Of course. You know, yeah. Whatever. And um, one day I was. Uh, we Kevin says that a lot too. Do you? Yeah. Then he goes on to and bitch about how tired he is. Kevin. And oh, yeah, why, all problems why, in home. We oh, I nice went to take a call for work. <laughs> I didn't show back up. At the, here's what? the thing too is <laughs> when we. When Are we, you getting contact drunk from me and Josh? No, I'm just tired. He's <laughs> like, God, Jesus. It smells like warm bourbon in here. Good. And I will great. say the one time, uh, I think it was the 24 hour or maybe it was the 12 hour. Yeah. I came up and hugged you, and you were like, God, you smell like musk and bourbon. I was you like, were, <laughs> You were putting out heat, dude. Yeah. Heat. And you know when, like, like, you, like when, when you get so drunk, you oxidize the alcohol yeah. in oh, your yeah. own bloodstream, yeah. and oh, yeah. it just oh, yeah. starts coming yeah. out of yeah. your pores? Uh-huh. That's what it sounded like. Yeah. So, um, I was... Like, that's what it smelled like. I, I was... Uh, I was at an engagement party, or sorry, I was I was at an engagement party for my best friend. I was the best man at his wedding. That's where I met Amanda. Gotcha. And we were like exchanging texts, and I kept trying to be like, "Hey, come meet me at the comedy store." Hey, come meet me at the comedy come store. Come see me in my album. Yeah, right. And she was like, "It's ten o'clock, okay? I, if you want to ask me on a date, ask me on a date." So hey. I did the old. I called her, and I was like, "Hey, it's Josh." And she was, "I know who you are." And I was like, "Whoa, <laughs> oh, right. all right." You're like, "I was like, hey, uh, I want to take you out to dinner tonight. Are you free?" And she goes, "I am free tonight." And I was like, "Yeah, great. Uh, I'll come pick you up." So I picked her up and she tells the story because I showed up in like jeans, like flip flops and a penguins t-shirt, <laughs> a Pittsburgh penguins t-shirt. And she had like a dress on and like heels. And she was like, oh, and then she, <laughs> and she went inside and put on jeans. She was like, it's going to be one of those nights. I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. So we went to this taco place down the corner from a place was BYOB and I brought a bottle of tequila. And so we, and so we drank some tequila and whatever. And uh, Brandy, you're a fine girl. You know, that song's like, Brandy. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I pick her up and started dancing with her. There's nobody dancing. It's not a dancing restaurant. And I'm just dancing. And this woman's like, oh my God, you guys are so in love. And she goes, it's our first fucking date. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So um, we like it. Now, it just, real quick, she sounded kind of cold in these stories. Yes. She's into it or no? She, well, she's, she said, she's feeling well, Josh well, or not? <laughs> she said, so I'm, we, we're walking back to her place. And I said, uh, are you going to invite me up? And she goes, no. And I go, not just for like a smooch. And she goes, who says smooch? And I was like, <laughs> apparently I do. <laughs> and she goes, no, but if you call me tomorrow, I'll invite you up. And I was like, okay. Hot. So I waited. You're like, I'm outside. <laughs> yeah. So I waited till midnight and I called her. Yeah. 1201, oh. I called her. And I was Did like, it hey, it's, it's tomorrow. Can I come up? And she goes, that's a technicality. I meant tomorrow, tomorrow. And I was like, okay. So, so I was like, so what time? 7, 7.30? And she was like, okay, 7.30. So at the dot 7.30 and I showed up with, totally, totally didn't know, the exact same outfit, just a different Pittsburgh t-shirt. <laughs> like, and she was like, again? And I was like, yeah, I guess. So that night we like we went out and uh, same then- Same taqueria, a different bottle. No, of same different, yeah, it's correct. <laughs> we went for pizza and then we, we came back and just I kissed her and then I was like, you invited me up, that's all I wanted. Invited me to the door and I walked away. Nice. And then like we'd hung out, we pretty much hung out every day for a week. She got like, she pulled her back out. I like brought her over some like massaging oils, I don't know, you know, something lame like that. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, sort and then smelly she was working and I, I'd slept over like a week later and I was like making her breakfast in the morning. She was on the phone and she goes, oh, you know, just living the dream. And I was like, I'm in love. That was that. Nice. And then from then on. And it so was like, she, nice she's story. what changed it in terms of wanting to be married. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think everybody was like, oh, you'll just meet somebody else, meet somebody. I was like, I won't. I'm 35 years old. I'm not, I'm going to meet, I'm not going to meet anybody. And then I met Amanda. And I, was like, I think, I think I, very similar stories um, for me of, I, I was always the guy that was like, I'm just not concerned with marriage at all. I've only ever seen yeah. it fail. It's, it's terrible. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. I listened to a lot of Tom Likas back in the day, which I really think <laughs> did a lot of sure. really fucked sure. up things to my head. Um, and then it wasn't until I saw, I, I met someone in my wife who I could finally see the way someone else was seeing me. Mm-hmm. And that made me go, oh, you know what? I kind of want to like, 
I'm going to tighten this up a little bit. Right. You know, I think that's what I think that's what a good companion will do for you. Is it's a weird switch, right? It's 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 just you know not to not to to ape that that that. Uh, as good as it gets line, but like someone who makes you want to be a better person. Yeah, yeah. And when you meet that person, you go, oh shit, I want to live up to a higher standard because I want to be there for this person. Totally. I want, I want to show up for this person. Totally. That's when you know maybe, maybe it's not even about that person's the one because I don't believe there's a one, yeah. but you're ready for that next step. Do you guys ever You're ready think, to put that energy in. Do either of you ever think about like being single again because I oh, like God no. There God, was, no. There I was mean, a, when I do, it's like one of those like, uh, when, I, when I like, I came home I with a pizza, uh, Jen came back uh, to Wednesday night, uh, landed. I picked her up from the airport, brought her home. She was like done because that's a, you know it's it's Montreal trout season. That's exactly the trout festival. Trout that's festival. a six hour fucking flight. Oof. You're exhausted when you get home. Yeah. And she's like, can you? I'm gonna. I, I'm, she's like, uh, I'll walk home with. I'm gonna walk with you. And I'm like, I'll stop at the pizza place. You go home. She's like, I'm gonna take your keys. I'm like, no big deal because I can buzz in with the phone or whatever, and then just leave the front door unlocked. Blah blah blah. And so like. Got the pizza. I went in and ordered the pizza. I had a beer. Caught up sure. with my people. Then grabbed the pizza, left, got buzzed, buzzed myself back in, yeah. went up there and went, and the door was locked. And I was like, oh. And so I text her. I'm like, hey, I, she, I know she's going to take a shower or whatever, but she's been home, you know, 10, 20 minutes before yeah. me. Hey, I'm outside. And like, you know, two minutes go by, five minutes go by. I ring the doorbell. And like, I don't doorbell. even hear Portillo scamper out. Oh, and no. I'm like, it, you know, seven minutes is when it's like, fuck! I didn't watch her walk. How did she? What if she got hit by a car and didn't make the thing? Blah, blah, blah. Mm. And that's when like I'm my single again. It's, yeah. it's not like oh we're gonna get divorced. It's like right. she could get hit by a car or yeah. abducted. With what her do I do? Case. Yeah, yeah. I and think eventually I, she it was just yeah. The phone was in another room. <laughs> I, uh, God bless her. I I, I I I don't think about that. I think my my plan is to die um approximately thirty seconds before my wife. Totally, that's the idea. No, we've, it's we've like, talked about this, and I've said you're not allowed to die before me. No. Uh, if you end up living beyond me because, you know, she's a lot healthier than I am, or at least, you know, because, you know, we all had our 20s. Uh, I miss smoking cigarettes. If she lives beyond me, yeah. she is allowed to mourn me for, she will mourn me for one year. Uh, and then mourn. she can do whatever she wants. She needs to meet a guy that treats her well and just know that no matter what happens, she will have, she can have a lot of fun, but she'll just never have, she'll like, it'll just not be as fun. As the fun she had, one hundred percent. You know what I mean? Like she's allowed yeah. to laugh, but he'll never make her laugh as hard as I made her. You laugh. know what's weird is so my grandfather on my dad's side died when I was four years old, and my grandfather on my mom's side died when I was thirteen. Both of my grandmothers have never had a boyfriend. My one grandmother has passed away four or five years ago, unfortunately, and my one grandmother's still alive. Never had a boyfriend. Nothing. My grandpa on my cousin's side, who I'm pretty close with. His wife died a year ago. He's had a girlfriend now for seven months. Like, he immediately got back on the girlfriend train. I think it's because men can't be like How old was he, though? 91. Well, I think men got a 70 year old girlfriend. I I look at my dad's generation because I didn't know my grandparents. um, But I look at my dad's generation. I was like, bro, you better never be single. My dad doesn't even know how to do laundry. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he'll figure it out. Totally. With the Google machine. But my dad, if you go in the kitchen, my dad would turn on all the broilers and put a pot in the middle and be like, is it working? It's ridiculous. What? Yeah. Ridiculous. That's why I think the, the cooking with Greggy, by the by, we got an F ton of tweets from the Carbonaro, which was oh, nice. Yeah, and a lot of Carbonaro. tweets from the, the pizza, yeah. too, which people was awesome. Like yeah, yeah. No, both of those episodes. Yeah. 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 I mean, they're telling you guys because you're in it. They were like, you guys really made the show. That creep, that's tall. You guys should do a show together. I think even Gangster liked the carb. Which was oh, my yeah. which well, my biggest yeah. audience. She liked it in the in the moment, right? Yeah. I mean, remember, she was very she was. Very, I think she says in the video, I, yeah. she was skeptical. Yeah, and totally and skeptical. Carbonara, but and same with Lucy cheese. James games. She yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody yeah. loves the carbonara. So you guys all liked it. Yeah, it was yeah. nice. I don't That's think I tried the carbonara. Yeah, you did. did I, I tried a little bit. That's right. Yeah. So good. I did. I was Kevin was there. I think about it all the time. You I know. I dude, it's so easy to make. Yeah, but I like when you made it. Yeah, make it tonight. I feel like there's like an idea for like a. A cooking cookbook. If I don't know if you've ever cooked, if you've thought about it, but like I just steal all my recipes. <laughs> but you're always like these. This is another Rachel Ray recipe. I'm like, well, yeah, motherfucker. I'm not Gordon Ramsay. I'm going. He, he, <laughs> my idea is, is like, co- what kind of asshole does a cooking show where he develops his own recipes? My idea for the cookbook is called "Cooking Is Fucking Easy," and it's like the bro's guide to learning how to cook. Sure. Three. You need it. Less. You yeah. need to go. You need to write down bar stories. Oh, the bar stories are written. You down. need to get that out, and you need to get that that edited. Do you guys want to hear a really good one? I do. Yeah. Wait, before I, I say, here's yes. what I'm saying, because it gives Shut me up, Kitchen <laughs> Confidential like vibes. Yeah. Okay. You know, like the Anthony Bourdain stuff. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. My friend like, was the star I, of that show. Here we Bonnie go. Somerville. What was no? What was the book he wrote? He wrote a book before that. Was it Kitchen Confidential? Bourdain, yeah. Bourdain yeah. broke out with Kitchen Confidential. Yeah. That's yes. what I'm saying. Yeah. So I'm saying you got to put that out because that could be an expose. By far the coolest 
my coolest Hollywood moment was, so I was working at Hotel Sofitel. Mm -hmm. This is from the, this is not the bar story I was going to tell you. I'll tell you the other one. We want to hear all the but, stories. Don't worry about it. So the, the kitchen that was attached to the bar was owned by a guy, guy by the name of Kerry Simon, who unfortunately passed away. It was a really, really amazing guy. And his best friend in the world is Bill Murray. No fucking shit. Right. So I go in there. As the many one people night, know, just to put it out there publicly, Bill Murray, of course, the dream guest. Dream that we guest. Have cool friends, of course. Yeah, as of a, course. Somebody who's yeah. born in Ghostbusters. Yeah. Um, so Bill Murray comes in with Kerry Simon and they're sitting at a table and I like, I come in and it was a slow, it was like a Wednesday night slow. I mean, you, most LA bars besides like the higher end hotel bars are pretty much dead unless it's like a club promoter night or whatever, pretty much dead, but it's like your regular drinking crowd, whatever. And if it, but it's the hotel, if it's a busy night, like the, it's the hotel is booked out, then your bar is going to be busy. But it was a slow night. I walk in and the shifts for the bartender was like four to nine and then nine to close. So I was the nine to close. Okay. Okay. And closes to 2 a.m. So I, I stroll in about 8.30 and my manager grabs me and he goes, don't freak out because I know you freak out about this stuff. But, <laughs> like I, me? but I can guarantee you tonight, Carrie will be drinking at the bar and his two guests are Bill Murray and Anthony Bourdain. And I was wow. like, get fuck out of here. Like that day, <laughs> the night before I got really drunk and had slept most of the day, gone to one audition. This is like the actor life. We gone to one audition and then gone to work at nine. And had watched like six episodes of Parts Unknown, right? Oh, wow. Nice. So I walk in and then at about 1215, they had this like nine course meal. They're all laughing. You can hear them laughing. They close down the restaurant. They're like, you will, let's get a nightcap at the bar. And I was like, I'm the only bartender. There's two people at the bar and it's like a corporate couple. You know, they were like the, where we work together. Yeah, yeah. Up in the air. Right. Yeah. So I'm talking to them and then I walk around and in, and in walks Bill Murray, Carrie Simon and Anthony Bourdain. And they sit at the bar. I was like, what do you guys want to drink? And, and uh, Anthony Bourdain's like, what's the most expensive bottle of wine you got back there? I was like, I'll give you all of them. You can just ch taste whatever you want. He's like, cool. So I give him all the whites, all the reds. They're like wine tasting. He's like, you make a good dirty martini? I was like, I make the best dirty martini. So I had to shake the shit out of this dirty martini. I like put a little blue cheese in it, like to, you know, sweeten the deal. Oh, and I shit. put it in there and he's like, what am I tasting in here? And I was like, it's blue cheese. He's like, genius idea. I'm, ha I'm handing it. You know who doesn't say a word the whole time? Bill Murray. Bill Murray. Does not say a word. Does not say a word yeah. for the first 10 minutes. And he's, he's just like waiting. Yeah, he's just waiting. And he's I'm waiting and I'm looking at him and he's like Murray's and he's like he's drinking a little bit. And he uh, you can tell he's kind of drunk. I mean, they've been drinking a lot of dinner yeah. and hanging out. And uh he's, you know, he, he takes a couple sips and he goes, I don't know. Got a, lot, a lot of energy. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was like, I, I know I'm like kind of an energetic guy. He's like, ah, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> Is what the only words Bill Murray has said to me in his that life. And he is. goes, Carrie, I'm going to head up to the room. He's like, all right, Bill, we'll see you. And Anthony and Bill, and they hug out and Bill walks away. That's the only words that Bill Murray has said to me in Dude, life. Dude, I would make Bill business Murray cards said, the next fucking day. Josh <laughs> yeah. McCuga, you got a lot of energy. A lot of energy. <laughs> nah, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> Bill, Bill Murray. Murray. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of the cool, I mean, the coolest effing things. I came home the next, or came back to work the next day. And everyone's like, Dude, I heard Bill Murray talk to you. I was like, Yeah, he just kind of insulted me. And walked away. I was like, Kind of <laughs> worth it. Kind of worth, worth it. it. He knows yeah. who you are. Here's 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 my favorite one. So the bar story, favorite bar story, favorite bar story. So um, it's it's like a Friday and it's getting busier and Randy. It's everybody knows is Randy's coming in that night. So when Randy comes Randy in, Randy Newman, no Randy, he, short people got. God, no we, we hate Randy Newman, Newman so much here. We hate him. Andy, we're looking for the Randy Newman. He got the short little fingers, kids and dogs. Short little hair. Crazy little fools. Short little belt. It's the worst. Right? So, God damn it. Randy who? Newman got. No, no, no. Right. <laughs> the Randy who walks into your bar. <laughs> so Randy Gerber, who's Cindy Crawford's husband. Got right? Oh, thank you. Thank you. So. We're told, you know, if Randy walks in, Cindy's going to be in tow and be ready because her favorite drink is the Cosmopolitan. Nice. So make sure you make like the perfect Cosmopolitan. What's your recipe for the perfect Cosmopolitan? So it's uh, vodka, a little bit of citron vodka, mm -hmm. fresh crayon, splash of lime, splash of sugar, splash of crayon. Okay. Like it's all just as long as it's pink. Gotcha. You perfect, don't want it to be perfect, red. Perfect. You don't want it to be like dark pink. You want it to be just pink enough. Shake the shit out of it. Strain it. Twist it. Blow the twist. Be done. Nice. Okay. Okay. So. Cindy shows up, and by the by, Cindy Crawford, I don't care, she could be 140 years old, she will still look perfect. Yeah. I mean, she is drop she dead has a, effing yeah. gorgeous. She just has it. Drop dead gorgeous. I hate people like that. And this that. is a two part kind of story. Love it. Okay, so, Cindy Crawford shows up, and uh, I'm the only bartender working. 
Friday night. But it's early Friday. It's like 6.30, so the bar isn't packed yet. So Randy walks in with Cindy, a couple of his buddies. Uh, there's a couple of people over here. We have like a couple of cocktail waitresses working around, whatever. And uh, I walk up and, uh, and I said, you know, Randy, do you want your usual? He drank uh, this one drink we had on the menu called a grapefruit basil. And then I was like, Miss Crawford, would you like a... I said, Miss Crawford. <laughs> Which she's married to Randy Gerber, but she still went. Oh, she's still Cindy Crawford. Yeah, she's not. Is Crawford? Is that going to Cindy Gerber? No, that no, that's not gonna happen. I was like, "Would you like a cousin Paul?" And she's like, "I love one." So I make his grapefruit basil, and I make their hit her cosmopolitan, and I slide it towards them both, and I got. Got to be honest with you. Oh no, I don't like the story. What would you do? I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> that's what I okay, said. That's to them. cute. That's cute. That's cute. Right? It's like I'm so nervous right now. And Randy's like, why? I was like, well, I, you know, I just got up to bartender two weeks ago and just nervous. And Cindy takes the drink and she goes, perfect. And she looked at Randy and he was like, could have been better. And he slides it back You're to me. You're kidding me. What an asshole. And I was like, okay, well, I, am, I impressed Cindy Crawford. That's all that matters, right? So I make Randy another one. He's fine with it. Flash forward three months later. Was anything different about what you did the second time? No. Well, he was just him being an the, asshole, the, right? Dick. Just totally a dick. Just totally a dick. I'd like, be like this. Oh, cool. Hold one on piece less of Jesus. basil. And just yeah. squirt oh it into that God. thing. He just, you this one, or this one's, got little, this one's got a little extra thickness to it. Here you go. Oh, no. It's the vanilla ice cream. Let me, just, Italian ice cream. Let me just tell you guys a bartender secret. If you're if you're at, a, at a, a restaurant and the service well is not the actual bar, if you send a Grey Goose back and you're like, oh, I don't know if this feels like Grey Goose, it'll come back the same thing. They'll just switch the ice. Of course. It's still, it's the vodka. Yeah. So. Fast forward three months later. It's around Christmas time. I'm the opening bartender. I come into the bar. Do, sorry. To, wait, did you guys ever do the thing where people were like, I don't, this doesn't like taste right. And we used to take it back to the bar and the bartender would just pour whatever the alcohol was down the straw. <laughs> did you ever do that? No. Because people would be like, oh, this isn't strong enough. So they just pour a little oh, yeah. bit down oh, the yeah. straw. Strong enough? Yeah. That's cute. Just uh, like a touch more and of so alcohol you, on no, top. Not even on top. It, they would they would just put a little dollop in the straw. So oh, when yeah. they sucked at that first blast. Oh, that's like, oh, oh, yeah, good. Nailed it. Way nailed it. Better. Nailed it. Woo. That's the kind so, of shit you pull. Three months later, right? And now I'm in Cindy's good graces. We like chatted at the bar that night. Nice. I mean, I, in my mind, after an hour and Randy's like, oh, we're going to head out to dinner. We'll see you later. Thanks for, you know, everything. Yeah, like Cindy Crawford's going to come back for a nightcap with me. Right? Like Cindy Crawford no, and I, I made Cindy Crawford laugh. Like that You're gonna is, be your as a kid from Pittsburgh, I just signed my Magna Carta. Sure. That was that. Sure. I don't even know what the Magna Carta is. <laughs> so... <laughs> I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. What about, uh, you. what about you, Brainiac? I believe it has something to do with the British. It's oh, cool. The British Bill of Rights. Oh, is it? All right, cool. You Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> he doesn't I know. Do. It's, I think it's the French Bill of Rights. No. But no, it's not. It's not. All right. So, three months later, it's around Christmas time. Are you and texting Jen? Just Google it. <laughs> Why would I text Jen about British shit? Oh, Gary. We're calling Gary. Hold uh, on. <sighs> don't read it. Kevin, I don't know what, I know, I'm what back right checking. now would teach. Hello. Lucy James from GameSpot. It's Greg Miller. Right. We have cool friends with Josh McCougar. Hey, Lucy. You? I love you so much. You're great. <laughs> Good. Thanks. How are you? Uh, we're great. Hey, can you explain what the Magna Carta is to us? The Magna Carta? Wasn't that a thing that they signed uh, something to do with Spain and England a few hundred years ago? Well, we thought as you know, an English person, you might know. <laughs> yeah, you know God. I mean? Lucy yeah. James games. God. Like, you, I'm glad to see America's rubbed off on you. You don't need them anymore. You don't need them. <laughs> you don't need history or no, culture. In the, in the Okay, all we learn about is World War II. So, yeah. Sure. Yeah, Churchill. Churchill. It was, Churchill. War. Churchill. It was the war. Yeah. It was your war. Honestly, Lucy James could look like a gargoyle, but with that voice, you'd be like, she's a 10. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Everyone no. loves the accent. I feel that the same accent. way about Gary Witta. Yeah, Gary That's Witta too. Problem. Gary Witta too. Exactly. We're going to call Gary next. Bye, Lucy. All right, bye. <laughs> you think Gary Witta knows what the Magna Carta is? Yes. Yeah. Gary definitely does. Gary wrote Gary. I wouldn't be surprised if Gary's one of Gary's hobby was just reading up about the Magna Carta. Is he streaming right now? He's probably streaming. Probably. Right now. Who cares? Oh, it's Hello. Gary Witt, it's Greg Miller. You're on. We have cool friends with Nick and Josh. How are you? I'm good. How are you? What's Great. up, Gary? Number one, I want you to know we've covered already that the British accent makes anyone a ten out of ten, and that includes yourself. T ten. I appreciate that. No problem. Second, yeah. dial it back, Gary. With this kids watching. The this. big question is, what is the Magna Carta all about? <laughs> Put R on that? No, don't you have Google? Why do you have to bother me? <laughs> <laughs> we just want to see how British you are. The accent will carry you, of course, to our rooms. We want to know what you think about it. You don't know what the Magna Carta is? I don't like all the questions you're Googling right now, are you? <laughs> oh, Magna Carta. I mean, don't you have Google? Seriously, don't they teach you this stuff? Yeah, of no. course they do. We pass okay. the test and we forget about it because it doesn't matter to us. I mean, 
I mean, the short version is it was kind. Of, it was kind of like the like the British version of the Bill of Rights. You know what the Bill of Rights is? Yeah. Right, yes. right, yeah, yeah. Kevin yeah. got okay. it. So yeah. Kevin got kind it. Of, kind of like that, but like five hundred years earlier. Okay, fair. <laughs> Good enough, I guess. I mean, I think we perfected it. Gary no, Witta. Also, I want you to know, you can yell at us as much as you want. Lucy James did not know what it was. <laughs> she did not know. <laughs> James did not know what the Magna Carta is. Right, that's <laughs> British. Can yes, just, that's correct. Is, is Lucy shit. James in fake British this whole time? I don't know, maybe. Oh. All right, bye, Gary. We love you. Bye. <laughs> I love having all these British people hey, on the show. I know, it's fantastic. He didn't, he didn't say I love you back. You notice that? Bye. No, that's Gary. But that's, the, the, but that's also, the British way, too. Nailed it. You did. Yo, I will give fuck. Kind of Funny <laughs> Kevin, at Kind of Funny Kevin, a, a big hella. I mean, it's a good one right there. You guys are idiots. Now, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> We Have Cool Friends is brought to you by Liquid IV. Liquid IV is the fastest, most efficient way to stay hydrated. Trying to drink more water? Liquid IV hydrates you two to three times faster than more and more efficiently, I should say, than water alone with an added bonus of vitamin C, B3, B5, B6, and B12. And you might say, Greg, you sound like an expert. I am, ladies and gentlemen, because before we ever got this sponsorship, Jen started using it. And I was like, what is this? And she was like, Greg, it's more efficient. She didn't say that part of it, but she was using it and she's really enjoying it. Liquid IV is the fastest growing wellness brand. You can find them anywhere, even Costco. You can find their hydration multiplier sold at Costco's nationwide. Uh, it's all liquid IV products utilize cellular transport technology, CTT, a specific ratio of glucose per pure cane sugar, sodium, mine salt, and potassium when mixed with 16 ounces of water, which helps your body absorb more water and nutrients you drink directly into your bloodstream. You can provide the same hydration as drinking two, three bottles of water with just a little bit of liquid IV. It's a healthy alternative to those traditional sugary sports drinks, no artificials, uh, flavors or preservatives. Liquid IV fuels tough workouts, helps prevent muscle fatigue, promotes healthy body uh, and post-workout recovery. And you look at me, you're like, guess what, Greg? Is that what you're worried about? You know it is. I'm out there pumping the iron and just doing kick flips. I love Liquid IV. This part's for real because Jen gave it to me and I know you will too. Right now, my listeners get 25% off at liquidiv.com when they use the code KFMS at checkout. That's 25% anything off. 25% off anything you order on Liquid IV's website. Go to liquidiv.com and enter the promo code KFMS to get your savings and start getting better hydration. That's liquidiv.com, promo code KFMS. Don't wait. Start properly hydrating today, which is a big problem for me. Barrett, am I right? Thanks, Barrett. Our next sponsor is HelloFresh with HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients are delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, you know I love cooking. You've seen Cooking with Greggy, and we just started using HelloFresh, and I am impressed. I am not reading the ad. You can see it around my head if you're not there. Uh, we got these burgers. They were fantastic. Everything was in these little brown paper bags. I loved that. It was all recyclable. It was great. It's great. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality regardless of your comfort in the kitchen. From step-by-step -step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout food. HelloFresh has you covered. Again, this is one of the big reasons Jen and I use HelloFresh now is the fact that we get these great recipes, these great ingredients, and if we don't want to do the recipes, we can just use the, the meat, the cheese, the ingredients for whatever we want to do. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, you can break out of your d dinner rut with our 17 seasonal chef curated recipes each and every week. There's something for everyone from family recipes to uh, calorie smart and vegetarian and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and Kraft Burgers. Those are the burgers we had. Uh, legitimately, they were awesome. Would I lie to you about food? I sure win it, ladies and gentlemen. Team Fat for life. HelloFresh is flexible, of course. You can add extra meals to your weekly order as well as yummy sides like garlic bread and cookie dough. And let me tell you, Whenever I'm eating pasta or a steak and I'm like, what side do I want? I want cookie dough. That's how it works. You, ladies and gentlemen, can go right now for $80 off your first month. That's $80 off your first month of HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Morning80 and enter Morning80. That's right. HelloFresh.com slash Morning80. Enter Morning80 and you will receive... It's, I guess I shouldn't say that. It's like receiving eight meals free. You get $20 off your first four boxes. Be like Greg and Jen. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Morning80. And we're back. Let's officially enter the friend zone. Wait, wait. I had to finish the story real quick. Oh, 
The Cindy Crawford story. That wasn't yeah. the end. Oh, right. Three months later, you're so in Cindy three Crawford. Months this is good enough. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. This is real quick. Three months later, <laughs> it's over at Christmas time. we lost in the Magna Carta. Yeah. <laughs> oh, more ice. Perfect. And beef jerky. Three months later, I walk in. It's around Christmas time. Beginning like December. Okay. And I remember it because uh, one of our waitresses was a Tiger Woods mistress. So our bar got full. Like, <laughs> yeah. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, I don't want to ask. I want to. I'm going to ask a. Never mind. I'm not going to ask that. Here's the crazy part about this Tiger Woods mistress. Six months later, I was the officiant at her wedding. That's a whole different thing. What okay. the fuck? Okay. What the fuck? You does know you does? Can't uh, do that. Let me ask you a question. Does Mister Tiger Woods' mistress know about this or? Uh, yo, he knows. Okay, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. That's pretty bad. I would. So like I walk in. T-shirts. I walk in, and the bar. Usually, when you walk in at 4 p.m. to the bar, all the lights were down, but all the lights were up, and there were these two kids at the bar, and they're in the bar, and they're like tossing bottles around and whatever. And I walk in and I was like, what the fuck are you kids doing? Get the fuck out of here. And I screamed it. And I look at the bar and there is Sydney Crawford, Adriana Lima and Elle McPherson. They're sitting at the oh bar. Oh my God. Three of them. And I look and I was like, holy shit. I'm so effing sorry. I like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know those were your kids. And Cindy's like, it's okay. Perfect Cosmo. Anything for you. Oh! And she remembered. Oh! She remembered. Oh! She remembered. So I was just like, I was fired the next day. I was but probably fired. Right, probably fired. Fire. Got rid of yep. that. Right, right there. Yep. Yeah. Now, Josh McCuga. Okay. Are you ready to enter the friends? Let's get weird. Let's start with nanobiologists who asked, what inspired you to dream and aim to be the Jeopardy host? Uh, when I was like, when I was a very young kid, I lived, uh, obviously lived with my parents all year round, but in the summertime I would go live with my grandparents and my grandparents were obsessed with Jeopardy and we would watch it every night. That was like, everything stopped when Jeopardy came on. And I remember saying to my grandma and my grandpa and everybody, man, what a cool job it would be to ask people questions all the time. And my grandfather said, you ask me questions all day long, might as well get paid for it. And so I, my, when my mom asked me what I wanted to be years later, I said, I want to be Alex Trebek or a regular at a bar. And then we stopped watching Cheers and kept watching Jeopardy. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. There you go. Here's my Thanks, follow up question to this. One. Go. Again, Sweetheart. I love you. You know this. I love I you. Think too. You're incredibly talented. I hope everything you do down south fails. You move up here and <laughs> we get to hire you. You live on your brother's couch. You work with us every day. Of course. This isn't an insult. Okay. And stick with me on my line of reasoning. Okay. I'll get you. It's going to be an insult. Do you think. No, this is, a, this is a legit like host to host question. Okay. Do you legitimately believe you're going to be the Jeopardy host? My reasoning behind it is when I first got introduced to you and like met you and hung out with you and then this right. thing popped up. Oh, that's an awesome thing. And you told me the story of meeting Trebek and all stuff. And that's on the podcast from way back in the day. Yeah. It was then the belief that when you came in and did not Josh belief, Pretty. when you came up and did Josh Pretty with us and like, don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not throwing stones, got hammered with us where I was like, oh, like I'm no longer on the same track of this is serious or a bit because I, in my head of, in my, like for me as being Greg Miller and who I am. Yeah. I said goodbye to opportunities when I decided I'm going to be myself. I'm right. going to do what I'm going to do how I want to do it and blah, 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 blah. And that meant that I'm never going to be X, Y, and Z official, like this kind of thing. Like it's the same thing. Like I remember once stick with me. It's a walk yeah, for no, no, no reason. It's a walk. But, um, it's a good walk. I did not EA play, but I did something else where it was star Wars and somebody came back to me and asked, would you like to host this thing for star Wars? <laughs> kind of funny fans tell me what it was. Cause I don't remember. It wasn't EA play yeah. years ago. Now I said, yeah, of course I would. And they came back and like, cool, like weeks later, like, cool, uh, we're all set to go, sign the contract, just so you know, ha, ha, ha. Uh, the reason it took so long is because Disney had to approve you. They went through all your stuff, and they said, you're fine. And I was like, shit, fucking Disney thought I was fine yeah. based on everything I just fucking said and did? Like, <laughs> yeah. that's crazy, because no, exactly. you look at my shit, Have I'm like, heard of the Graveler? The, the no, Graveler? Uh, Hypothetical abortions? I'm oh, all over the map. First, I mean, off, first off, Disney has a lot of resources, but there's no way they watched every hour of thing you ever said. They have and enough again, employees. I do think that like, there is an argument to be said for... When I make, when we, any of us here, make a joke, and it's like, well, there's a library of content. Clearly, they're in a very specific space making a joke. Well, I will say this: um, Do I believe? I, I I wouldn't keep doing what I'm doing if I didn't believe it. Do I think that my personality is, is exactly perfect for Jeopardy? Absolutely not. But I think that that's the point. I think that that a game show should evolve, evolve a little bit, just with a little more personality. I'm not going to change the gameplay. Sure. I just oh, think yeah, that. Yeah, of course, of course. I just think that. A little more fanfare in it. Yeah, I, I just think I, I was like, I was put on this earth to do a lot of things, but one of those things is, you know, I be the host of Jeopardy. And I think that um, even though I'm like, I'm wild on the microphone, I have a good time, whatever. I think Alex Trebek has a good time. Oh, I yeah. Think, oh, yeah. I think that think a lot Alex of people Trebek have a good time. Fuck, how dare you? 
I think a lot of the Here I think a lot go. of this oh country. I think so it's Josh McCuga. Yeah, so so Josh McCuga Jr. Fucking Scrappy Doo here's got to oh come out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm talking to the big dog. Eat your food back there. Love, you want me to stir your bourbon Eat with your my jacket? I actually yes, I would. Have love you? That. <laughs> Wait, have you? Have you been to? Do you remember back in the day at E3 when um, there was that Wolfgang Puck in uh, in LA Live? Yeah. You know, the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They had that I thought you were going to tell me fucking Wolfgang Puck was doing something to eat three. Like, no, no. What? The the um the Wolfgang Puck has a beef jerky rum vodka drink. That's, that's incredible. Amazing. Dude, some of the best uh, uh, old fashions I've had are oh. like, oh, we have candied bacon. We have a so beef jerky good. piece in there. Yeah. Um, but yes, I do. I do believe I'm going to be the next host of Jeopardy. Do you do, think about what I'm talking about though? Of like wh- how, like what uh, ABC? 100 percent ABC, NBC. NBC? It's, NBC, a, it's a national. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's like, an affiliate. It's a syndicated show. My apologies. So it's like I wouldn't think Josh is family friendly though. But I, I mean, like, here's the thing is, like, I mean, we, again, even you and me talk about this all the time in terms of what we do on the shows of, like, we, uh, yeah, family friendly is one thing, but, and also, hey, we've, ho- hey, uh, we're ABC affiliate or whatever the fuck. We're announcing the new Jeopardy host. It's Josh McCuga. That's awesome. The Wildberry fans go crazy. This goes crazy. But then somebody, like, uh, is they like, I didn't like that guy because during the kind of funny stream, he said X, Y, and Z and did and blah, blah, blah. And they have a clip of you being like, no. blackout drunk, unable to understand the newlywed game. And it's that's like, true. that's like one of those things of uh, fact finding for an agent that they have to be ready for, right? I think so. And I think, uh, I don't think that I've said or done anything in my career that is beyond or offensive enough that I wouldn't get hired for something. Sure. Let me say, let me say this. My buddy, Hassan Minaj. Who was on Daily Show? Sure, cool. And then was on uh, Netflix. Uh, Uh, What was the show? Nick, uh, Tim loved it. Patriot Act. It's incredible. Tim actually requested him for We Have Cool Friends. If you're gonna give me a hook up to meet him, do you want me to? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because Tim would love that. Yeah. Crazy. Let me. I'll, I mean, I'll reach out. I can't guarantee you anything. But oh no, no, I know that. uh, Honestly, he is. I think he's from up here, if I'm not mistaken. I think, I think so, he right? Is actually. Think and he's an, he's an amazing guy. Like one of the most genuinely cool dudes of all time. And he and I had this exact conversation about when he got The Daily Show. And then, you know, they got Goatface Comedy. His, his buddy Asif Ali is a really good buddy of mine. Their other buddy Fahim Anwar is a really good buddy of mine. Um, and when he got Patriot Act and stuff, he was like, dude, Netflix, nobody is vetting anymore. They just want the entertainment quality. But not, not to say that like... Out of my 30 some thousand tweets, because I looked the other day, I was like, oh, sure. I how many times have yeah, I tweeted? No Who way. knows? Right? Is, is some of them offensive? Maybe. Of course. But I'm are. not saying the N word on any of them. I'm not doing it. But I'm also just very honestly myself. Yeah. And if I can't be that, what am I doing? 100%. And if, may, and if I don't get Jeopardy, which will crush me, I know that. Um, but I'm also realistic that maybe Ryan Seacrest will get it, or Chris Harrison will get it, or somebody will get it that's you know, a little more established and just whatever. And that's how the business works because a lot of game shows now are just, let's give it to celebrities because they can host and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, Jesus. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Would you carry uh, I would still love to be able to host a, and I have multiple different game show ideas that I would love, that I've pitched places and there are or places. And, you know, if I get to the point where I have that kind of thing, then yeah, I do it. Cool. Yeah. I just Is wondered, that a good answer? That's a great answer because I mean I think it nails it. Of like I, that's the weird thing with you. Stick with me. Is that you are the parts I think everyone who watches this show or listens to this show understands about us and the parts of LA you tell us about. Where I, yeah. that's the biggest thing for me. Of like you know of hey guess what? My entire life's been lived on video and podcast, totally. which means I've said stupid and I've done horrible shit. Yeah. And when you call me on it, the, I think the test of my character is me going yes. Yeah. I, did, I did fuck up, and I regret that decision. I 100%. shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. By the but way, that's and and I, and I know we're 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 we're, we're paying uh, us ourselves. A no, good I'm picture. a dirtbag. I'm a scumbag. <laughs> no, there's a lot of jokes that we've said that maybe some people don't like, oh, sure. but that we would stand by. Like, no, 100, 100. Is that I don't want to say that like, everything we've done in the back and then in the past. We're like, we're going to burn that Sometimes. down. There's a we, conversation to be said like, for sure that I get called on something and I yeah yeah I defend me. I understand that's what I'm doing and that's what the show is and that's who I am. I'm not saying I back down every time, but I'm saying they're for sure in my 13 years of shit. Have you seen what Joe Rogan says on his? Thing on what Howard Stern says on his show, those things, they're hired by NBC all the time. They're, he's hired by UFC and Fox and ESPN. Like these are people that it's now. I mean, and listen, I'm not comparing myself to Joe Rogan no, or Howard Stern. Though. I was gonna say with UFC, you want to fight him? I'll fight. UFC him. doesn't have a latest stand. I mean, it literally yeah. is one of the most brutal things you can watch. Yeah, so, but so Joe it's Rogan still on major network joke. television. That's still on major television. Right. Same right. with America's Got Talent. Howard Stern was at one point considered the worst person in America, and and then he was hosting America's Got Talent for four years. At the end of the day, like 
And how First about off, those magicians on that? God, they're so cool. At the end of the day, though, I, th- I feel like the, like the general public... <laughs> Magic is just the coolest, Kevin. It's, it's, really is. ...is smart yeah. enough to understand that if you're watching a comedy show or you're watching a show like Howard Stern, you're going there for that specific vibe. Yep. That's the culture, and it doesn't necessarily have to be that everywhere else, right? Yeah. At the same time, too, like, I mean... <sighs> There's something to be said for like, yeah, people are culturally like are aware of and, and more sensitive. But at the end of the day, Howard Stern has a fucking huge audience, huge, and they got to make money. People yep. got to watch this shit. Yep. And oh, lo and behold, people who aren't afraid to speak their mind or maybe say something crazy for the sake of like making other people laugh, they get big audiences. And maybe, and that's what people like. Maybe to answer your question too is maybe if they hire one of these other just other hosts to do Jeopardy, it would just do the same numbers. And what if they, oh, hi- yeah. oh, what no, if they hired more. somebody? That they never heard. I one thousand percent think it would do more. Because right? guess what, Jeopardy is a brand. Yeah. The people whose lives revolve around watching Jeopardy, and that's this is me casting shade. You know, in the same way that I read comics. Because you're talking to one of them. It, exactly. Yeah. When you when the, the people who watch these shows, the team turn in finals tonight. It's going to be amazing. These, all right. Well, that now you just dated the show. Sorry. The fact that these shows are part of people's regimens and schedules, right? That Jeopardy viewer probably isn't going away, but. Bringing in a Josh McCuga suddenly brings in a bunch of kind of funny best friends who don't watch Jeopardy. Totally. In, and in Collider granted, too. maybe they're there for the first week, but there's also 5% of those people and Collider fans stick around. Stick around. That's, a, that's, I mean, a, that's a plus. No matter right? what happens, though, like I, I don't see when Alex Trebek does step down, they're going to take a dip in the ratings, I would imagine. Well, probably. Because it's going to be different. It's going to be Honestly, a Honestly, I think it'll be an initial up. Because I think it'll be they an up with his it. final thing, and then I got to see the new guy, and then it'll be the uh, my well, it's curiosity's like Fallon. over. It's like Fallon. It was like Colbert. Right. It was right. like, like Jay Leno when Jay Leno took over yeah. the, the famous. Did late you guys night ever wars? read uh, the Late Night Wars? You ever read? That no, book? I saw the movie. Watch the document. Or yeah, the movie. The documentary. Yeah. Fucking really great movie. Yeah. Great yeah. movie. Yeah. It's on HBO still. If you guys want to watch it. Yeah. No. Of, well, yeah. Crazy. I love you guys. This is a lot of fun. We love you. I'm telling you right now. How was that? How was the beef jerky and the bourbon trick? I don't know. Oh, the in the in the bourbon. It's great. It's fantastic. I want to eat it during a show like some savage. Forget the name of that bar that had, hungry, had this famous burf, beef jerky dr- burf drinky? Burf jerky. Be- yeah. Beef jerky burf drink. Jerky. This plays well into the next question. <laughs> Mitchell, Mitchell C. Feld says, is there a point where you think to yourself, I've had too much to drink tonight? Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. And usually Do you I think ha- you have an alcohol problem? Uh, no, yeah. I don't. I, I mean, because... I and this that wasn't like an antagonistic question. No, no, no. Because no. like, uh, I like I drink on the weekends or you know hang out, but I, there aren't like weekdays where I'm like I had to have a drink tonight. Like the sure. the wife and I might have one glass of wine, of course, uh, a couple times a week, whatever yeah, yeah. during dinner, or you know I go out on Friday with the boys, or I, we go out and have a couple of drinks. I, I'll be honest, my only vice in this world are Cheesecake Factory gin martinis. I swear to God, I swear to God, I why the Cheesecake Factory Cheesecake Factory. Gin martinis, or their martinis, are the best martinis in the world. Wow. I've never... Wow. Mastro's, Morton's, Ruth's Chris. Okay, like, well, you're just going to chain restaurants, but yeah. I know, but I'm talking about like bigger name, expensive restaurants. I've been to expensive places all over. Like, we have our own dirty olive juice. I'm like, this isn't what I want. The the dirty gin martini at the Cheesecake Factory with a couple blue cheese stuffed olives yeah. in the martini mm-hmm. is absolute perfection. And here's my question for you. Okay. And this is a callback to earlier. You said that, you know, you made this amazing martini, the best martini. What is your recipe for a dirty martini? Because I wrote that down as a note. And I want you to know, as everybody knows, I don't usually take notes, but you've said interesting things. So are you well. a vodka guy or a gin guy? I'm a vodka guy. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Uh, I would recommend either kettle or Tito's. Sure, I love kettles and I love Tito's. Okay. And Tito's is what's in the freezer right now. So Tito's is the best, in my opinion. Perfect. I mean, it came on the scene real late. Sure. Uh, it's one of that, it came in the, what they call the vodka rush. Have you, did you remember, you remember when Sky, that happened? Sky, New Amsterdam. Where it was like shit. vodka. Yeah. It yeah. was vodka, everything, because everybody was drinking vodka. Mm-hmm. And gin hasn't made a rush yet. I mean, they're trying to make a rush, but if you came up with a gin brand that people were psyched about. There's aviation kind of coming up? Well, it's Ryan Reynolds because he's everything. Yeah. Uh, but like, I'm allergic to Bombay Sapphire because there's a certain nut that they put in there, like a berry that I'm allergic to. So my skin, it looks like I went tanning when wow. I drink it. Gotcha. That's cool. That's a bonus. But so uh, if I use Tito's, you take, you take a whole, like a giant consumer jar like a costco jar of the pimento green olives okay right yeah, yeah, yeah. pour that into a like a blender or like a magic bullet or all the olives all no 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 just the juice like okay. drain the juice cool, 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 cool. okay and then put like two or three ice cubes in it and then just blend it up so you'd like a mild bit of water in it and then sure, just sure, throw sure. it in a squeeze bottle nice i see where you're going. keep that in your I fridge see where you're going. okay keep okay. that in your fridge then you take your tito's throw it on in your shaker tin and now I don't like the shaker tin with the top, like what that you would buy mm-hmm. at, a, at a um like a Amazon. Anyway, correct, that's what whatever. I have. Yeah, I want the the big tin and the small tin, so you put them together ah, like a sure, bar. Ah, two tin, cups. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay, the two cup tin, and I want you to shake the shit out of that. 
Okay. Sure. With just the vodka and the ice. How much vodka are you putting in? Uh, I would put like two and a half ounces okay, cool. in it. Yeah, yeah. Shake it. Take off the small cup. Now you put the dirty. And you How put, much dirty am I putting in? Half, uh, like half if it's in a squeeze bottle, like mm-hmm. a. Ksh, ksh, okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Shake the shit out of that again. So the the liquor's already cold. Now the the hard stuff is already cold, or the uh, olive juice is already cold. Put that in, and then you strain it perfectly. So you want those little ice chips in it. Mm-hmm. So the first mm-hmm. few sips mm-hmm. have mm-hmm. the ice chips. Never, if you want a good dirty martini, you don't put a vermouth in it. Oh, thank you. I agree Never. with that 100%. Never. I, of course, as every cocktail I've ever learned, I learned this yeah. from Eric Castro, who you know from Fall Leader yeah, yeah. and a whole bunch of different shit. And so, yeah, December, me and Jen were like, we want martinis. And I hit him up during our Christmas break. Yeah. And he gave us a killer dirty martini recipe. But it was the same thing of no vermouth. No vermouth. Like, don't put vermouth in and anything. And usually leave about a finger at the top. Okay. Because you need to walk it around. Oh, sure. Yeah. And course. if I'm going to I'm a party. Aren't I? Yeah. If I go to a party, I'll request it in a bucket. Or as you would call it, tumbler. Oh, okay. Yeah. Excellent. It's the bartender Excellent. term. What do, you, for, what do you garnish with? Uh, I would do an olive. Just the olives in it, right? A couple yeah, olives yeah. in it. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing better than, again, if you wanted to go fancy as shit, take a, like, honestly, like two specks of blue cheese to shake in it. So you get that, that flavor of blue cheese is so big. Yeah. That you can strain it in there. Sounds and then great. blue cheese olives. Because you're a blue cheese guy. Fantastic. No. Oh, you're he's a ranch not. guy. I'm a ranch guy. Yeah, oh, yeah he's not a Jen, blue cheese guy. Huge blue cheese guy. We're throwing a dinner party today if you want to come make two drinks. You have to stand in the corner and not talk to us or eat our food. Yeah, they have a bow tie for you. That's it, though. <laughs> we don't have to dress you and up. Do I have to dress up? No. Oh. Interesting. I was supposed to fly out tonight, but maybe I'll stick around. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what um, else yeah, I'm, I'm in the friend zone I'm looking right now. Here's where I want to go. There was an insult, of course, from Neil Quigley, who said, why are you so much cooler than Nick? Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, we all agree with it. And we know because of many different reasons. I don't think reasons. that's true. I think we're all pretty nice guys. Uh, but then cool Connor. Guys. Oh, nice. No, Connor no. Bross, C. Brosty chimes in and says, Josh. Yeah. Out of all the celebrities you have met, which one stands out the most? And why is it Nick Scarpino, the host of the best show on the internet? <laughs> But for um, real, like you, you, yeah, you does stand out with celebrities. You've had, you have these bartender stories that you need yeah. to write. I agree. Or mm-hmm. you do need to option into some kind of weird story telling podcast thing, yeah, whatever you want to do. You write the book, first, but it's also like when you came on and did the carbonara on cooking with Greggy, it was like, this is the thing. Chrissy Teigen said was too unhealthy yeah. for a cookbook. Totally. And you're like, what? And you tell the stories of delivering food. Like you are in LA and like you're in LA in such a LA way. If totally. that makes sense of like where you're not part you, know, you start there not being part of the world, but you, you infiltrate it in such an interesting way. It's like um here's what I'll say we'll do. Here's what I'll say we'll go. do. You and I. Okay. Okay. We write a screenplay called Adventures of an LA Actor. And it's just about your life and your progression and all these crazy stories get into it. And then the last episode I finally book a sitcom. Yeah. Okay. Just like extras. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Extra extra. That was actually a pretty depressingly decent show. Extras? Extras. Yeah, it was fucked up. It was George Clooney. You know, he produced it. Did he really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't he produced that. it. That's funny. All right. So best best celebrity encounter? Or yeah, like but best? Best, uh, the question was, of course, uh, out of all the celebrities you've met, which one stands out the most? Uh, David Bowie, for sure. Yeah? yeah. Just because he's Bowie or do you do something crazy? Well, so, I mean, it's David Bowie, you know exactly. what I mean? Which is really cool. Um, and if you, if you say David Bowie, I feel like 99% of the population knows who you're talking about, right? Like if I were to go to India in like a remote village and I said David Bowie some kid would be like Ziggy Stardust yeah. you're like okay you know <laughs> um, David so I was living in New York and this isn't even an LA story I was living in New York and I was bartending at this corner bar it's called the Spring Lounge and we were famous because we had this like uh, taxidermy shark on our wall of course the shark was going like Thing. If you're an audio listener, the shark was roaring, roaring to the left. <laughs> yeah, to the left. So um, I would bartend like three nights a week usually. And, you know, bars in New York are open until 4 a.m., which sure. is the worst thing for a bartender. Had a party. Yeah. Worst thing for a bartender, best thing for a drinker, uh, but also best thing for a bartender drinker. <laughs> right. Yeah. So at about like yeah. 3 a.m., yeah. we have like five people in there. And I'm like, all right, we're closing in 35 minutes. Let's get drunk. And like, we'd all get drunk together and, uh, you know, whatever. And I'd like rack up their tabs and they'd be so drunk, they'd just pay them. So. Wait, you're stealing money from people? Of course. Okay, just make sure. Oh, they're getting something out of it. They're getting something out of it. I mean, it's also 23 years old, Greg. I was trying to make some more tips. Of course, I'm sorry. At a 11 to 4 a.m. tip. (laughs) You know, go fuck yourself. So. (laughs) That's the bourbon speaking. He loves me. Don't worry about it. So up the street was this bar called uh, Synergy. And a couple of the guys that were trainers would always come and drink at the bar. And I was like, listen, I like to work out. Could I get a free membership if I gave you guys like a bunch of free drinks each month? And they were like, sure. I was like, listen, it can only be beer or like well. And they're like, sure, no problem. So I start working out at this bar up the street. 
or this <laughs> working out at this bar, working out at this. <laughs> They're like, uh, yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> we'll train you while you serve while us. While you serve. <laughs> so uh, I go up to this this gym. It's a nice gym, and uh, the the guy that was the head trainer was this British dude, and it was right before the 2006 World Cup. Hot, lest we forget. Lest we forget. Uh, Italy won that one, and I was living in Italy, Little Italy at the time, which was awesome. Beautiful. That's where this gym was and everything. And so, uh, like, the like second or third week I'm there, we're all watching some, like, pre-highlights of, like, teams getting pre mode for the games and everything. And uh, England had this guy named Crouch. His last name is Crouch. And he had the robot when he scored a goal. He was real lanky. And I'm like, oh, that dude's sick. And this British guy behind us goes like, oh, yeah, that guy's fucking great. And I was Australian. That's my bad. And uh, I turned. Oh, he gave that guy <laughs> fucking great, ain't he? Thank you, mate. Sure makes the queen happy. <laughs> it's me, Toby. <laughs> so Harry I turn around Toby and this so? guy's got a hat turned like way down low, like like cool Greg style, right? Like way down low. And um, it's David Bowie. And he's like, I'm, uh, I'm here to uh, work out with Liam. And I'm like, oh, Liam. And he looked at me and he looked at him and then he looked at me and I was like, and he's like, He's like, yeah. Wait, it's oh, Bowie, Bowie, Bowie. Bowie. Sorry for the listeners. I just mouth Bowie. And uh, I was like, yeah, it's David Bowie. So we're watching him do I was like, man, I'd love to watch those games with you guys because I don't ever watch World Cup games with any real soccer fans. And so David Bowie's like, we should all watch them together. And I was like, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. We should yeah, be yeah. Sure. Oh, we're moving together. We're moving together. Oh, fuck yeah. So first game is England versus Sweden. And there's this English bar. I was living Wait, in. Wait, how many days later is this? A week later. Okay. And so uh, I'm live. I, my apartment that I live with my buddies that I res- described earlier was uh, like in Little Italy area. And did you the- see the movie with Christian Haydenson, by the way? No. What's Anakin Skywalker? Uh, Hayden Christensen. Hayden Christensen called Little Italy, Little Italy no. with Emma it's Roberts. Not good. On the way home, watch it, please. Okay. <laughs> it's it's, it's a a short not going to be. Oh able no, it's a real it. movie. Oh, it's a real movie. It's terrible. Oh, it's so good. Okay, it's so good. <laughs> Greg do it. loves I'll it. Not do it. <laughs> he <laughs> tried to. <laughs> Greg tried. We were, we were on a flight back from like Kansas City or something. Wait, is he doing in New York accent? Hayden Christensen in Toronto. We were. I forget where we were, but you were trying to get me so hard. And you watched on your own. No, I never seen it before. Oh my I never God. watched it. It's I never terrible. watched that shit. It's terrible. So, um, so we walk to this bar, and it's actually a Swedish bar, which yeah, is weird. Fair, so there's a fair. ton of Swedish fans, and there's like this this like corner of English fans, and it's me and Bowie and this guy and like a couple other buddies, and we and and he orders us drinks, and Bowie's like, "I have a cranberry juice," and I was like, "I have a beer, I guess." And the other guy orders a beer, and the and Bowie's like, "Yeah, I don't drink anymore," and I was like, "Yeah, okay, no worries, man. You lived your life." Yeah. And I was like, are you going to pay? I was like, I legitimately said, are you going to pay for our drinks? He's like, of course, mate. I was like, all right, cool, cool, cool. So the, he, the Bowie goes That's to the- dick thing yeah, to say. I know. He's 23 year old I'm 23 years old. He's fleecing but, people at night. But, but <laughs> also during like the workout week, me and Bowie become buddies and he knows that I'm just a smart ass, right? Okay, cool, and cool, I figured cool. out that he's David Bowie and it's like, it's fine, whatever. <laughs> I figured out. <laughs> like you cracked the code. Like, like, the code, like, like David, whatever. Like, like, we're all out. fucking with each other. You know what I mean? Like it's, 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 it's a funny relationship. So we get this thing and he walks to the bathroom and all of the bartenders come over to me. He's like, is that David Bowie? Is that David Bowie? Is that? I was like, yeah, it's David Bowie. And like, holy shit. Holy shit. And everybody's kind of freaking out, right? England and Sweden tie 2-2, right? And Bowie, Bowie's like, so we didn't lose, so you have to watch the game, and you have to watch the game with me next week. And I was like, okay. Oh, man, twist my oh, arm. Oh, fuck. And that's the worst. How, often, how much are you talking to David during this? The whole time. I'm sitting About next to him at the bar. What? That's uh, everything. We're talking about Afghanistan. We're talking about the war. Like, cause it's like it's 2006, so the war is raging sure. on in Afghanistan. Like the American but you're not troops. like diving back into old shit of like no, remember no, no. Labyrinth. No, well, everybody always asks me what my favorite, but like my first question to David Bowie was, and I was like, Hey, how did you learn that thing with the hand with your ball? That's the first thing I asked him, and he was like, Mate, that was a hand model. <laughs> I was like, you never saw me moving the ball. It was always my close-up the, of my hand. I love you, and this is the worst David Bowie impression I've ever heard. Okay. <laughs> Just thanks. say it as Josh. All right, fuck <laughs> off. All right, anyway. I like, so, I like who does the accent. So, fuck you, Greg. So, I'm on the story. So we watch the next couple of games. We watch, and uh, England makes it, I think, to like round of 16. They get eliminated. And me and David Bowie have like struck up a friendship. Like it's, it's pretty, been pretty fun. This right? is amazing. And I live right down the street, and he'd be like, hey, uh, me and the wife are having some people over. Do you want to come over? I was like, yeah, sure. It's me, <laughs> David Bowie, Iman, some, like, designer I didn't know, Paul fucking McCartney. 
<laughs> that would I would be like I gotta go I gotta go I can't I can't stay in this fucking apartment I am not worthy it's of Paul, this place it's Paul fucking McCartney if I walked in if I thought I was getting out with David Bowie right? and I walked in and fucking Paul McCartney was there yeah. I'd be like no yeah no Paul you gotta leave Dude, you gotta do you fucking leave it's not a there's like there's 16 people at a dinner party and it's like two random guys from the neighborhood and then just ultra successful famous people and we're all sitting and around and beetle and yeah and the and a a beetle knight. he's a right? knight it's sir paul, sir paul and they are listening to me tell stories about college and i'm like i'm entertaining them and be like so i'm like there right and this girl's like quit smoking cigarettes and david bowie's like how many cigarettes did you smoke and i'm like a lot he's like yeah like we're we're like everybody's yelling imam by the way imam is the coolest person ever like oh, she is cool. so effing cool okay so we're buddies we're hanging out like he would invite me to those 944 parties where it'd be like David Bowie and your mom and like there'd be a right shoulder and it would have been my right shoulder in the picture like the, <laughs> the, and, like got in close <laughs> like David Bowie and your mom I'm like hey that's my jacket that's crop, my jacket crop out this rando <laughs> yeah crack out crack out this guy so it's about like three months four months later or so and I was like I told David I was like hey man I'm moving to Los Angeles because it was like right around the time I was moving and he's like ah, I hate Los Angeles hate that place with a passion i'll never come visit you i was like all right i was like well if i come back to new york i'll, I'll send you an email i was like please do it'd be great I'm like no problem and he's like i gotta be honest with men like i look in this mirror and when i feel like when i came to this gym i was something and now i'm feeling some real changes and i go cha -cha 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 changes and he yeah. goes fuck you and he walked out of the gym <laughs> he was like one asshole would say that to me, and it's you. And he walked out of the gym, and we had a good laugh about it. Oh, and that was the, no, no, he didn't care. He was just like, I made a joke about ch-ch-ch changes, yeah, yeah, and yeah, that yeah. was that. And then that was the last time we hung out. Oh. And I like moved, and I never saw him again. He passed away. Oh, that's so yeah, because I never, I like, not, I didn't get back to New York much. Yeah, yeah. Well, why would you? You're in L.A., the promised land. Yeah, exactly. That's it's all perfect there. It's all fucking yeah. man. Everybody heaven. always asks, like, would you ask about like Ziggy Stardust or this? And I'm like, I asked him about them labyrinth ball. Be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. I, I would I would be like, I don't know enough about David Bowie to ask him deep questions. No, about I know life. nothing. I know Ziggy Stardust and Labyrinth, and that's it. And I would just be like, What do you What did you do yesterday? Yeah. What and did when you I do the day I met uh, I met Duncan Jones <laughs> yeah, about three days ago. I met Duncan Jones when he was doing the press tour for uh, uh, Warcraft. Didn't they have a strained relationship? They had kind of a strained relationship. Maybe it was Duncan Jones. His son. Is a strange, uh, not really a strange Zoe son, Bowie. but but they had they they made they up. mended it yeah. yeah they mended it at later in life. The moon it was like yeah, the moon no was the, moon. Oh, the guy yeah. that we got a uh, um, he did Warcraft uh, World of Warcraft yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but our friend uh, Andre Lima Aru who put me put us in the comic book we we pushed him to work with Duncan Jones right yeah we right. It was through a fan competition uh, uh, I love I fucking love and Duncan Jones super nice guy and after the interview I didn't do it on camera I said hey man when I lived in New York I was really good friends with your dad and he's like he's a great guy I was like yeah he was yeah. and that was that that's awesome yeah it's cool. Now, Josh, what I want you to know okay. is that any traditional interview would end with this story okay? because it's too good. Yeah, so really that good was story. amazing. You yeah. said it so high. But we are no traditional no. interview here. <laughs> we, we have beef cool jerky in our drinks. I want to ask one final question from here and then pair it with one of my own that okay. I think are in the same vein and I think are important for the audience and your audience and every other audience to know. Jack Schultz writes in and says, what do you think is your greatest failure and how did it help you get where you are today? And then my question is, the things I struggle with as an entertainer or a personality or whatever you want to yeah. call us, right, is that when people talk to me about who I am on camera and who I am on Twitter and what I am on blah, blah, I'm always like, you have to understand that is me being the person I want to be yeah. when in reality I am not that. Right. Yesterday I did four shows and it was exhausting and I picked up a whole bunch of different things and I, and I went home and I collapsed on the couch and my wife came home and I wasn't the person I wanted to be with her. Right. And it wasn't that I was mean to her, but I was like, shorter than I wanted to be and I had to get up and I eventually ate and then I kind of got on track and I wasn't there. You talk about going out with your friends to, or your brother actually yeah. to a random place and being like, oh, this is going to be a story you're going to tell, right? Like, are there moments for you when you're not that person and you are down and you're not enjoying it to that level of life? Because I look at your Instagram and I always talk about social media, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter or a highlight reel. Totally. And I look at yours and I'm like, fucking Josh McCuga is living the fucking life <laughs> wearing Pittsburgh shit that I wish I had for Mizzou and doing all this crazy shit and like, and you're yeah. always smiley with us and stuff. Yeah. Like, is that what I want to, Jack's question of your greatest failure and what you learned from it, but then also like, there's a Josh that isn't this happy all the time, right? Sure. Yeah. I would think. Okay. I mean, sometimes I, uh, man, that's a tough question. Um, 
sometimes failure is not exactly failure, mm. right? Sure, like, sure. Um, if I if I look at how I behaved in certain situations with certain people, um, and I and I walk away from it and think, man, that was like that just wasn't a very nice thing to say, or like that wasn't a really good look, or that wasn't you just weren't a very nice person. I don't know if I have one exact failure, oh, like of course. my, no, you my yeah, biggest yeah, 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 failure, yeah, yeah. but there are certain failures in my life that I think about all the time that maybe I'm not comfortable about talking about. Of course, on yeah, a microphone. You, don't, you don't need to be. Don't need to be. Um, but that I think about all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there are certain failures to my parents. There are certain failures that I, to my wife. There are certain failures to uh, friends that aren't something I ever want to bring up. But every time I think about them, like I definitely feel less than. Sure. Uh, that helped me grow into a certain extent. But to be honest with you, and I think my wife might tell you is I always try and have a smile on my face. Sure. Uh, when I was a kid, I was like probably 13. We had this babysitter. She was amazing. Um, Jessica Newsom. I had the biggest crush on her in my whole life. I was Have like, we looked she, up her lately? Do we, are we keeping face? She's contact? married a couple, a couple kids. <laughs> <laughs> lives in montana uh i have her address no big deal like she it. works at this one place yeah. nine to five tuesdays wednesdays and thursdays yeah, i wear a hat when i go uh she was amazing <laughs> <laughs> i mean i remember me and my brother in like this is probably like 15 years ago and he you know bet my brother's two years older than me and we were talking about like our babysitters growing up and we, and we always talk about that right have you had uh, that moment with your current wife and this is a complete diatribe for your very yeah. heartfelt moment of like you, i don't know if you have either of like where Jen came home, she's like, oh, yeah, blah, blah. And I was like, and then yeah, this kid, in the, I knew the kid or whatever, she, I, she's like, I think I, he has a crush on me. And I was like, for a moment, there was that moment, like, wait, no, he's, he's, a, he's a six-year-old. Yeah. Why am I, like, offended? Yeah. Yeah. That this, like, why am I getting jealous all of a sudden? No, I, I was, this is a crazy story. Uh, no, I can honestly say that's never happened to me, Greg. About two I want to fucking punt that kid through the <laughs> goddamn I world. do it! <laughs> hey, Garrett! <laughs> no, so... About two years ago, I, I went to a golf course and uh, the guy working there comes up and he's like, hey, are you Josh McCuga? And I was like, yeah. And uh, he was like, uh, yeah, I used to I used to be in love with your wife, Amanda. And I was like, well, it wasn't my wife. So it was a like girlfriend. Interesting right? opener. Okay. I used to be in love with your girlfriend, Amanda, Amanda her last name at that point. And... Uh, Nakuga. Uh, no, her name was Gordon. Her last name was Gordon. Right, we don't have to give point. away all these Sorry. secrets. I'm just. I was, <laughs> I've had a what's little. Her, too, what's her social too, security? By the way, too much <laughs> bullet. Um, and I was like, cool, cool. And I was like, he's like, yeah, she's great. And looked like right in my eyeballs. And I was like, so what? Am I gonna fight this guy? Yeah, gotta no, go. yeah, yeah, out like yeah, a yeah, nine yeah. iron and yeah, give him the old you. jam of the thing. No, because I think if you don't get jealous, then the relationship isn't working. Sure. Well, I mean, like, I wasn't like really jealous of the kid, but it was that weird thing of like, that's a weird thing to say. In the same uh, thing, when we went to Quebec this last time, yeah. we went over and did this thing. And oh, you're speaking like a real Canadian, Quebec. Quebec. Oh, I got, I finally got corrected. Oh. By the, everybody, everybody was like, all right, you've hung out with us long enough that you should be saying Quebec, not Quebec. And I was like, really? Fuck, <laughs> really? Why don't you say something? Yeah. But it was the same We're thing where we were out, and, the, and I was like, it's all happening in French, but I'm like, this guy seems really into my wife. Yeah. And like, I'm the dumb American. I can't even talk. But you can see body language. Exactly. And then when we got later language. in the car and Jen's like, oh yeah, and that one guy was super, I'm like, I thought so, right? <laughs> but I wasn't even jealous then because right. like, I get oh, no. it. Like, I got it. But if like, for the kid won't try to get my, my no, wife's No, like when you're in a conversation no. with somebody and your wife and he won't even acknowledge you, I know that Been he's there. in my wife. Been and there for and sure. I'm always yeah. just kind of like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> you give a little slap. Like, like, oh, oh, but I, I, but here's the thing. Nuts. In my life, in my life, I've never been in a physical fight outside of with my brother. Like when we were kids, just mm -hmm. like uh, headlocks, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never been in a physical fight in anything. One time in college, some like dudes were getting in a fight outside of a frat house and I like jumped in and like I punched a guy and I was like, Ugh, and I ran away. I don't like this. I don't like this. This is a little too aggressive. Yeah. Because fights are not like they are in movies. It's no, not no. like Banshee where it's just like, kah, 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 kah. Like if you get hit in the face real hard, it hurts. You a lot. you go down. Yeah, yeah. What's Banshee? I don't it's know. It's a Cinemax show. Okay. okay. Thank you. By the way, you guys would love Banshee. It is. Hold on. Okay. So content. the boys, which comes out in a few yeah. weeks. Yes. The Amazon show. Hold on. Yeah. Jack which, Quaid. I'm all about it. Which I've seen all of them now. Are they good? You've seen all the boys? I can't. I can't. I'm not allowed to say. How did you see all the boys? I'll tell you Christ. after. It. <laughs> I burped bourbon, sorry. Jesus that, God. that came over this When did you day. have watermelon? First off, <laughs> first off, I've been on the other side where you burped the beef Did you have a cantaloupe? Mm-mm. 
I feel like we all had I'm Chipotle, kidding, right? Can we have Chipotle? No, I had a pork chop. It was <laughs> oh fuck. Kevin, am I still <laughs> talking right. into the microphone? Hey, Barrett. Oh, Barrett. Barrett. oh Barrett. Sorry, man. I love you, buddy. Now, with all due respect, Barrett. Hey, real quick, You though? understand that I'm the only one who has really good eyeline on you. So, uh, I, I was aware of Tim getting engaged, but I didn't know that Barrett was getting engaged. So, Barrett, congratulations, man. Oh, That's amazing. You. Thank you. By the way, what you're doing is really an amazing thing. It's really, really cool. Uh, you're making the best decision in your life. It's really fun. And if you play your cards right, maybe one day someone will walk up to you and say they really are still in love with your fiance. Yeah. I mean, won't that be I'm the not going to confirm nor deny that's already happened. Yeah, so. shit. I'd Shift be like, good for you. Cool. No, they. So the the Amanda like crush thing, that whole thing. Yeah, so yeah. I get in the cart and we drive off, and my buddy's like, "You know, do we like go back and beat his ass?" Or? <laughs> well, yeah, to be fair, it's a very, it's a very odd thing yeah. to say to someone. Totally, that is very uncouth. Yeah. Like it, that that's Ooh. basically saying Maybe like I still have feelings for your girlfriend, and if totally. you ever fuck up, like I will. But he didn't be like fuck you over. I had a crush in your life. <laughs> I was, like, I, was cool, I, was in, I was in love with your girlfriend. Yeah, which means I'm still in love with your girlfriend. By the way, that's what that means. What? Yeah. Also, I still don't think I've never met your wife, but I still don't think your wife likes me. My wife adores you. I feel like all oh. it was, you, 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 what you're getting hung up on is that Jen does. There's two versions of my wife for public consumption, right? That okay. like it, it interacts with other people, where it's either party Jen okay. or mom Jen. Okay. And so when you were when she's like. I've watched Josh in his shows. He drinks a lot. Do I need to be mom gen to him? And when you when you're in that mom uh, mom mindset mom yeah. set of, mom set exactly of like does this guy drink enough? When he comes, he's like, I make a carbonara with no <laughs> eggs or milk, whatever it was. And no she, cream. No cream. No cream. And she's oh. like. Oh, I'm the mom. Dude, yeah. Does he? And then she ate it. And once she ate it, she's like, "All right, he's cool. Yeah. I check out every." Well, because we also drank a bottle of white wine in the first ten well, minutes. That's what we do there. You <laughs> know what I mean? That's how cooking with guy works. Yeah. 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 By the way, that uh, that continued to the next episode. Oh, okay. It was just yeah. cannonball now. Fucking yeah. thing in the next one. Um, he left. I think he was there for that oh, episode. No, over there. I what are the one. pizza? Yeah, oh, that's yeah. right. That's we all were. Yeah. And then I went to uh, lunch with Tim, Tim and Gina, and, Gina <laughs> and got ham boned, and then got in an Uber, went back to my brother's place, and my in laws were there. Unknowns to me because my oh, no. wife was hanging with my, with my brother and my sister in law. They're like, Josh. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I've been working. I've been well, working so long. G Gia, Tim, and I had like three old fashions apiece. Gia was crippled. Yeah. Tim was like, I'm feeling pretty good. And I was like, I've already had six bottles of wine. <laughs> and then I got in the Uber, and the Uber guy was like, Hey, man, you all right? I'm like, Just get me to San Carlos. Just get me there. Just fucking get me there. He's like, It's 11 30. I was like, He's like, no, it's three o'clock. I was like, it's three o'clock. Where did the time go? Holy shit! Yeah, but right, back so to the you're question. Not happy all the time. <laughs> no, back to the question. My biggest failure is hard to like lock down, but sure. I have a lot of failures in my life that I know about. And as far as being happy all the time, honestly, yeah, I am happy all the time. That's awesome. I, I smile as often as possible. I try and make everybody's life as bright as possible because there's too much darkness in the world to not be bright. Yes, Josh McCoo. That's what everybody should do. You are one of our cool friends. Thank you hey, so thanks, much for man. coming in here on episode four, setting the record for the longest episode. <laughs> Crushing is Anthony Rapp. Thing? Anthony Rapp did an hour and 16 minutes. You came in here like, nah, -uh, I'm Josh McCuga. Should we not have done this long? No, we should oh. totally should have. Are you oh. kidding me? We can keep going if we wanted to, but I got to pee. So that's oh, yeah, a, yeah, a yeah, normal place to end, end the show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think of Josh McCuga? If you say nice things, say them in the comments below. <laughs> if you say mean <laughs> things and you're listening on audio, roll down your window and yell them outside of your car. <laughs> Uh, Josh, where can people keep up with you? Just at Josh McCuga. I post everything I do on my social medias, Twitter, Instagram, uh, the Josh McCuga show on Facebook, but I don't do a lot of Facebook anymore. So just Twitter and Instagram. Hell yeah. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back next Monday with a brand new We Have Cool Friends. But until then, it's been a pleasure to serve you.